everyone, welcome to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 91. Yay! And I am your host, as always, Nathaniel Ruffle Jance, aka Mr. Prime. And nice. uh, what are you, Mr. Time? Sure. Prime Time, so. baby. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, and who was, who's my uh, special <laughs> other hostess over there? Hostess. Uh, hostess? Oh, yes. Uh, Erica Moore? Oh. Erica Moore? Oh, go. God. Well, you said hostess. I know. So. Uh, Eric Moore over there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Ninty Prime. You can follow him at Emo8790. Uh, we'll have links to all that down in the description. Uh, so this is our last podcast before the holidays. Yeah, uh, yeah. Technically, while people are, are watching this live, they weren't supposed to be. Yeah. It's okay. I'm not mad at you Merry guys. Merry Christmas. That, that, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, Merry Early Christmas. Yeah. Um, this is actually our it's supposed to go out on Christmas Eve. So... Uh, when the fully edited version is out on Christmas Eve, uh, we decided that we wanted to do things a little different. Obviously, I have my holiday hat on, and I'm wearing red. Actually, I'm not wearing red for any other reason than I'm cold. <laughs> and this is the Nintendo Prime official merch jacket that I have. Uh, I got the podcast merch on. Yep. yep. Don't you have a Nintendo Prime jacket somewhere? I do. Yeah. At okay. my house. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just making sure it never yeah. got lost. Because I'm no, like, I, I, know, I know I have my red and blue, but I thought you had a no, red one. Yeah, I have a red one? Yeah. yeah. Got all three. three. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, we're just going to kind of go over uh, 20... We're, we're kind of going to do like a 2018 uh, recap because the final podcast of the year uh, comes out on the 31st. And that podcast, Eric won't be here for. Right. So that podcast, I'm going to try to gather some other people on, maybe 5J or some others, and uh, try to talk about 2019 and things we're looking forward to. Yeah, that means Eric's going to miss that podcast. And technically, that podcast would be easier for Eric... Since some of the stuff we're talking about today is going to be like, uh, I played yeah. Breath of the Wild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I always like, it, it's, it just feels like the end of year podcast. And it feels only right that I do it with, with on the episode that Eric's actually going to be here for. Uh, but before we get into anything else, I do want to make sure we shout out our patrons for this month uh, that from the $10 and up category. Uh, first up, we have uh, J-Dub H. Uh, Zenith and Edward Norton. Those are all $10 Patreon backers. They're ones that get to watch us live every single week. Uh, and then we also have a f- uh, four twenty dollars backers in Andrew, uh, 243 Aberg, 2 Holmes, Neil Willis, and Be Righteous. We, we're actually only down to four twenty dollars backers. We were at seven at one point. Huh. You know what that means? There are more slots available for the Nintendo Prime Podcast at hey. the $20 tier. Because if you support us for $20 on Patreon, you have an opportunity to be on one podcast per month with these lovely two people up here. Unless yeah. I'm not here. <laughs> He's usually here. I'm here. Usually he here. misses like two or I've, three I've, a year. I've, I think no, I've missed. This will be my second one I've missed total. No, you missed on. Um, okay, so maybe my third yeah, one. Yeah, it'll be your third one. And they all happened in the past year. So I said he misses two to three a year. Sure. Just because he didn't miss two to three the year before when we were only doing it like once a month. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support on Patreon. All of our $5 backers as well. They get the audio version a day early. We have more $5 backers than anything else. So thank you guys so much for all of that support. So let's let's just start off by talking about 2019 a little bit. Or 2018. Sorry, not 2019. Uh, and tell me, like, what's what's your favorite game you played this year? Oh, gosh. Because we're, we're, we're towards the end of the year now. Uh, pretty much all of the cards have been played for Switch at this point. Right, right. And uh, I mean, I know a lot of your experience comes from what you played at E3 too, <laughs> right, right? But so, well, yeah. I mean, we played some games that aren't out yet. I know we did. Mm. We did. Like Which te- like Team Sonic Racing? <laughs> that we not did. out yet. That we did. And Ninjala. So no. I mean, oh. So you had to bring that. I up. did. I you did. Because that, that might be one of my most favorite games I've played all year, even though it's not <laughs> out. Um, That's how amazing it is. But uh, let's see. For ones that are out, even though I don't. Own it, Starlink, Battlefly Atlas. Okay, Starlink Battlefly Atlas. Freaking awesome when I played it at E3. Sure. So, yeah, I think that might be, and a Pokemon's right up there too. I, I do and I did en- I have enjoyed playing Pokemon. So. Po- Pokemon, you have the I Pikachu. Let's go Pikachu. Yep. Yes. Uh, so my thing is, uh, let's just focus on like those two games right now because those two games kind of came out the later half of the year. Uh, you haven't pl- you don't own Starlink as far as I'm aware. No, I do not. Uh, it's a good time to pick it up, by the way. Yes, and uh, I've um, seen sales. Yeah, like thirty bucks. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know. I'll give you my Amazon affiliate link. Kicks yeah, me yeah. back like a buck. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> Whoa, whole dollar. Hey, there you go. Hey, every dollar counts. Yeah, you're right. Um, but yeah, like it's so cheap now. I, if if you guys don't own Starlink Battle for Atlas, uh, what's wrong with you? 
it's literally thirty bucks, forty at, at most at many retailers right now. A big drop from seventy five uh, at launch, and that's for the physical version where you get the R wing and the Fox. And I would argue uh, Fox and the R wing alone are probably worth yeah, thirty right. bucks. So, right. I mean, I don't know. As a right. collector of stuff, I think uh, I might even pick it up myself and add it to the little old collection over here. Yeah. Vary it up. Less Zelda. You see all this Zelda yeah, like, yeah. Right behind us? Time to put an R-Wing in the middle of yeah, it right? all. Wait. With Fox <laughs> McCloud. Yeah. Because um, that makes sense. Yeah. It's all uh, Nintendo, right? Yeah. We can it make does. it make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I played a lot of Starlink Battle for Atlas. I will fully admit I have not beat the game yet. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I was going to do a review of it, but then some other stuff came up, and I just never got around to it, which is fine. I'm still working on a review of Let's Go uh, Eevee, which I guess it's Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. They're the same game, just mm-hmm. slightly different Pokemon in them. There, right. there doesn't seem to be any story differences, so... Uh, so I'm, I'm working on that review and that review is still coming out sometime this week, uh, that this releases publicly. So, uh, that is coming, but Starling Battle for Atlas, uh, what was like, well, what stood out to you about that game when you played it? Oh God, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. It, the, I know, I think coming out of E3, we both were like, you know, Kind of gave a Breath of the Wild feeling. Yeah, kind of. It, it did. I don't. I. I don't know how to explain it though. It, it's. It's. The graphics are phenomenal. Well, sure. Almost to a certain point of it. Being and, and, almost and, too and, phenomenal. And, and what <laughs> sucks about it is because it's a multiplayer. Yeah. Um. I've seen it on like the Xbox One X, and I'm like, oh my god, it can be better. Yeah. This is that's insane. crazy. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, right? <laughs> but whatever. It still um, looks really good on Switch. Right. It. I don't know the. the the feel of it, the fact that you can just flip these, the, your weapons in and out virtually. You don't have to the toys yeah, to you life. You don't have to use the toys. Yep. Um, and it's it's relatively simple to do. the The control schemes felt really nice. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of what stood out the most to me, and and the fact that uh, the guy that we had for the. Uh, the booth was kind of awesome, just sitting there chatting with us, and he's just like, <laughs> as after we both crashed into the planet, he's just like, yep, everybody does that. Yeah, that was funny. Um, I, I, there's a lot of things that I, I loved about Starlink. Um, just the freedom. Um, yeah. And I think that's what, when I like felt that in, in the demo, um, it really came through in the final game. I mean, it's completely open and free. Once you get past the beginning tutorial stuff, which happens in every game. I mean, mm-hmm. same is true in Breath of the Wild. You want, once you get off the Great Plateau, the game completely opens up. Yeah. Uh, and that's the way that it is with this. You get past the beginning part, and it's just wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, go do it. There's many different objectives, many side missions, uh, a lot of different things to do, and, and I really enjoyed it. There, there were aspects of it that I felt like could have been improved, um, you know, more enemy variety. Yeah, uh, and stuff like that. But funnily enough, the day we're recording this, uh, by the time you guys hear this in its final version, uh, there's actually an update going out the day after we're recording this huh? uh, that's adding for free as a holiday update new enemy types. Oh, there you go. Um, new missions, oh, new, new, a whole oh, bunch of new content go. for free. It's like Ubisoft new. Like, yeah, we know. We we heard yeah, the yeah. complaints. Yeah, here's some free content. Yeah, like nice, uh, nice. Yeah, and the trailer for it looked sick. Nice. Uh, it. I, I'm well, I'm very impressed. And I know the other thing, the other one complaint that we had was, is that there was too many enemies that were able to spawn on the on the screen at once. Oh, that's where it kind of laid it, lagged it. Well, here's the thing. Bit. Here's what you learn. Yeah. And, and, and and I've learned this in playing the game. You can still lag the game out. You you could get too many enemies on screen and lag yeah. it out. But here's the thing. You really shouldn't be letting it get to that point because that means yeah. you're going to die. Well, yeah. But. <laughs> so it's like, right, stop but, sucking at the game. Yeah, yeah. Granted, I was doing it on purpose at E3. Right. Because I'd already beat the demo once. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I thought it was so weird because I was playing in, t- in tabletop mode. Or no, I'm sorry, on the TV. And I'm like, why is it lagging worse than handheld? Yeah, right. Then I'm like, oh, right. And handheld, I actually beat some of the enemies. Right now, I'm ignoring yeah. them and just trying to beat the boss because I know how to take out the boss release. Yeah, there's that. Um, and I actually died. I, I think I took out almost every ship they had there. Yeah. I think that's actually how my demo ended was I my, my final ship was destroyed. They said, well, I guess you're done. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. Uh, no, I think you beat the that one final boss right. Like, you didn't have a whole lot of health left. I think oh, that's what it was. Yeah, something like that. Uh, anyways, I really enjoyed Starlink. And uh, I think uh, when I, I look back on 2018, it kind of reminds me of it being, like, the most underrated game to come out. I know I hyped it up a lot. But, yeah. like, across the board, when I, when I look at what games people talk about, I mean, I'm seeing The Messenger, an indie game, talked about a lot more. Yeah. Celeste talked about a lot more. Dead Cells talked about a lot more. Uh, Octopath Traveler, um, heck, Mario Tennis Aces talked about a lot more. 
But like people are kind of ignoring that Starlink even exists. Yeah. Uh, you rarely see people live streaming it. Uh, people, you know, I did an update on it today in Prime News. How come I haven't done a standalone video about about it in forever? You know, it, yeah, it's just yeah. not a game people are talking about right. much. And it kind of sucks because now at the price point they're cutting it to, it's like, yeah. oh, it is well worth it. Yeah. If you didn't think it was worth it at 60, it is well worth it at half off. Oh, yeah. So, which, or 75, I guess, was the original. Now that I got my game. Christmas bonus, then, yeah, yeah. Oh, that yeah, there be, you go. Yeah, there you go. And it's time to get it before it, because you right, know after exactly. the holidays, yeah, it'll yeah, probably yeah. bump back for sure, up. For sure. Uh, but yeah, so it's, uh, that. that's definitely one. Now, the other one you talked about was Pokemon. Yeah. Um, What are your thoughts on Pokemon. Uh, I've enjoyed it so far. I've so far. Where, where are you at? Um, I think I just beat. You passed SSN. Yes, I okay. just came out of the SSN. Okay, did you do the gym after that, or no? Uh, maybe. I can't fully remember exactly if I came out of that and beat the gym or not. Okay. Um, I may be in the process of beating the gym. Okay, sure, sure. So, okay. yeah. Uh, so what are your thoughts? I mean, it's a very different Pokemon game. It is obviously lots it of is. nostalgia. Yeah. That helps. <laughs> um, no, but I, but I like setting the, the nostalgia aside, how do you feel about I, it? I like the mechanics. I I, I I do like the the overall overworld Pokemon walking around. Oh, that's amazing. That is probably that's like the, the best change I, ever made like, I'm, to the I, game. Put it this way. If they do this in the next gen, I'm there day one. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it is like... I'm sorry. That's amazing to me. What, having the Pokemon out in the world, like the random encounters made sense back in the 90s yeah but like they're still pop up you know quick enough that yeah, they can it, still have you random can have quote unquote random encounters but, but you can kind of see what pokemon exactly, is before it happens yeah, yeah. but uh but still like yeah. i love being able to see the pokemon in the overworld right it's awesome yes um what else did i the, the battle mechanics for n- using the pokemon go versus the old battle down to catch pokemon that's give or take here nor there. Um, I, I like the go mechanics. Um, it does speed the game up a little bit, or actually probably quite a bit. Um, which, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying it, yeah, I, yeah. It, it, it doesn't bother me that... Like, it know, could be the old way or the new way. It could be the old, old way or the new way. For me, it doesn't matter. That one doesn't, you know... Yeah. It's not a massive selling point. I like it. It does speed up the game. Do you like... Okay, so for the catching, do you prefer the yeah. motion or do you prefer handheld? Um... Because the, there is slight motion in handheld, but it's not. I mean, it's not a whole. It's it's, it's literally, like it's like it's literally just t- tilt yeah, yeah. tilt a little. It's bit. nothing. It's, um, it, it's just like you can go. We're no, nothing. actually, I do like the Pokeball Plus. Actually, surprisingly. Oh, okay. The Pokeball Plus, because uh, I finally <laughs> finally after you oh, gave you, it to me to use you, for the yeah. review, I haven't recorded the footage with it yet. Right, but I was but using it a bit yesterday. Does it actually did it actually connect and actually stay connected and everything? Yeah. Well, I only played for like ten minutes, okay. so that's not a good test okay. period. But um, for the next like. I don't know, the next two hours of the game, I'm going to be playing exclusively with the Pokeball Plus yeah. um, and then recording and all this stuff yeah. for the review. And the thing is, uh, there's a lot of things I like about that Pokeball Plus, assuming yeah. that yours doesn't have any continual issues. Right, um, right, yeah. Because, for starters, um, this is the first game I have played uh, that Nintendo's published anyways that HD Rumble feels like it matters. Right. Yeah. With the Pokeball Plus. Well, it really of- doesn't make a difference with the Joy-Cons. Right. I mean, they do it with the Joy-Cons, but because it's not a ball shape, right. it doesn't really work right. Right, right, But the right. HD rumble inside the Joy-Cons, it literally feels like that ball is rolling around in my hands when right. it's doing the little roll. Yeah. Like, um, that is awesome. What about, like, 1-2-Switch, though? I okay, know. so 1-2-Switch yeah. Switch was the proving grounds for HD rumble, right? right? It was like, kind of yeah. like the Wii Sports yeah. without being packed in. It should have been a pack-in, but whatever. Right. Uh, it uses the HD rumble really interesting. Yep. Uh, from the you know you, the certain games you the, the, like you like the picking the lock and you can like yeah. feel the click uh, yeah. like you can you know w- when you're turning a lock or at school or something like it it's a really interesting and cool thing but it felt like just a bunch of little ideas mm-hmm. made into games that really weren't that fun yeah uh, versus something that feels naturally occurring right, in a game okay. that immerses you into it right, does that right. make sense no, like yeah, yeah, when you're milking sure. the cow it doesn't feel like I'm milking a cow yeah. It just doesn't. <laughs> it's cool, yeah. but it feels nothing like milking. It just looks funny. Yeah. You know, when you're, oh, yeah. you're drawing. Okay. Yeah. Even when you're turning the lock, like the way you have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, you're turning your hand like this, but you're, like, you're holding this big thing in your hand that you wouldn't <laughs> be doing. So it doesn't feel right. But yeah, like right. with the Pokeball Plus, yeah. it's specifically designed for this. 
And with right. the HG Rumble in there, it literally feels like right. even with the, the you know I would prefer it to be a little bigger, but I, even yeah, at the I size it is, I, I understand the why they did the size they did. Well, they're trying to make it fit everyone, right? So you kids, don't have to like buy different size right. ones. Yeah, kids would kid, it fits kids' hands fairly although well. For, although for fifty bucks, you can just give me options. Right, I don't, I don't know how. Yeah, exactly. Attachable yeah. parts, yeah, right? Legos. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> think that would go well with the HG Rumble. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, I love I love the HG Rumble in it and, and the way it. I will say this. With the Pokeball Plus playing on TV, mm-hmm. it's the most immersed I have felt in a Pokemon yeah. game. Oh, for sure. Maybe my entire life. For sure. And, it, you know, it's even one of those things that they, it does come with the wrist strap, the ring, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. You so, can so, even, so you can actually you literally can actually, throw the ball if I you wouldn't want. throw it. I wouldn't, you know, try well, to chuck, chuck it. it. But <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. wind up and I wonder I if would, uh, I wouldn't wind up and I should, fastball it. But I should, I should test that just once. I'll aim it slightly away from my big TV, so I know yeah. it's going to be a bad throw, but I want to see if the strap can hold the tension. Yeah. And if it breaks, I guess i got to buy you another one. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, well, they okay. still sell them. Right, so. yeah. It's not like the Smash Bros. controller for the Pro Controller where they're not really selling them anymore. They're, so now they're reselling for like 100 bucks. So, oh, so if you had one of those and I smashed it in yeah. anger, lose it in Smash, yeah, yeah. I, I can't really replace that. Yeah. I could probably buy a custom shell yeah. from someone that's like the same thing and put it on a, a standard Pro Controller. But... Um, yeah, I know the immersion with it was great. Uh, the big thing is, you know, we did a whole cast about Pokemon, right? So we don't need to spend too much more right, time right. on it. But I and I have a review coming, so I have yeah. a lot. I have a lot of deep thoughts no, on this sure. game uh, because for those who don't know, watching, um, I played all the way through Gen Five, then I stopped. Uh, I tried out each of the gens after, and even some of the remakes wasn't feeling it anymore yeah. for a lot of different reasons. And that's why this review is going to be really interesting because obviously there's that nostalgia grab, but then there's like the simplification of things, some things I like, some things I don't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it's just a very interesting prospect to get me back into Pokemon. What I can say, having not beaten it yet, having not done the Master Trainers yet, which I will be doing for the review, uh, it's it's definitely... I, I like Pokemon again. Yeah, And that's kind of my general takeaway right now. Where yeah. I'm sitting right now, I like Pokemon again. Mm-hmm. And just like with you, it's a time thing. you know. Um, I was avoiding playing it because I knew I wanted to record gameplay and I didn't want to have to restart up a new save file for it. But even like I think back, like you know, since the last time I saw you playing it, like, I haven't played that many games since then either. Yeah. It's, it's the holiday season. It's, yeah, right. Like It's kind of like Smash came out, and, I, and I've probably put in like 10 hours maybe in Smash. Uh, I've put in one, <laughs> and one and a half. It, it, it wasn't. Um, it, it, the the thing is, is I wish I had more time. But like games that come out this time of year, despite it being like the most popular time to buy games, yeah, yeah. When you're a kid, you have lots of time. Yeah, right. When you're a parent, you ain't got that time. Yeah. You're still working, even if you get off for Christmas and Christmas Eve. You have your family stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there's still times to play. Like, um, yeah, I'm bringing my Switch over to my parents for Christmas. Yeah, and yeah. I might go to the bathroom and have a little bit longer bathroom break because I'm playing a match and smash. <laughs> Oops. It just happens, okay? I'm sorry, parents. If I'm in there for seven minutes, it's because I got in an online match that was a seven-minute three-stock. I'm sorry. Not my fault. Right. I just need to get better at the game and win. Uh, anyways. Right, right, so, right. Just as long as you leave your three-stock when you... <laughs> so, I, you know, I would have made time for it because I'm doing a review. And now, like... I'm pretty much not playing uh, outside of live streams. On live streams, guys, I'll be playing some different games. But for the purposes of what I'm playing when I'm not off live stream the rest of this year, it's Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon for like the next week. Mm -hmm. Nothing but Pokemon so I can get that review out. Yeah. Um, That being said, I think uh, some some other games, like when I look back at some of my favorite games uh, that I played from this past year, Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that pops to mind is Octopath Traveler. Ah. Yeah, I haven't Um, played that actually. A lot of people, it, it had a lot of hype at launch. It, mm-hmm. it was like one of those games that hit its maximum hype level like the week of launch, and then two weeks later, no one was talking about it anymore. That's crazy. Uh, and I think it's, I, I think what happened is you had people like me, mm-hmm. uh, people like you know one of our patrons, Be Righteous, and others that really, really love this game, mm-hmm. start to finish, absolutely love it, fantastic game, love the story, lo- love how everything comes together. Yeah, there's things that you know you can always criticize and could be better. Um, you know, it's one of the big criticisms is people want there to be a, like an overarching story that connects everyone better. Fine, cool, whatever. Yeah. They, they could do that in the second game. Yeah. But uh, what happened is because of the hype, a lot of people ended up buying the game mm-hmm. uh, in week two and week three, especially in the U.S. where it wasn't sold out. Yeah. And uh, when they did that, 
those people came in expecting it the best of the to, best of games. Well, they expected it to blow their socks off because yeah. okay, yeah, you get past the art style, fine. The art style is what it is. You like it or you hate it, whatever. But some people were trying to get past it. Like, okay, so it's a callback to classic RPGs, but with a modern twist. Well, a lot of the modern twists were visual elements more yeah. so than gameplay elements per se. So some people got into it and they're just like. I mean, there's nothing special here, and that kind of killed the hype for it. Yeah. Because people who weren't planning to get the game bought into the the, the hype from people like me who enjoyed it. Right. Then they got it, and then they're like, oh, uh, yeah, it was fun for like, you know, until we got the chapter right, two, right, and then right, it yeah. wasn't fun anymore. Well, that's kind of like how I am with movies. I go in with, like, I try to control my hype. <sighs> Because sometimes I, I've, I've, I've there are learned, times like we gotta go. The, how many times you tell me we gotta go to this? And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I saw five seconds of a trip. I'm good. And they're just like, you don't understand. We gotta go. And yeah. it's like, yeah, I'll see it later. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that, I say that, like as yeah. an example, I tr- I, tr- I have not seen. I still have not seen the Han Solo movie. Either way. Now, granted, I have multiple ways to watch it right now. Yeah. So I can watch it. Yeah. I just haven't, and I know I will because I'm a big Star Wars guy. Right. Uh, but. You know, and I'm very interested in the Han Solo character. He's one of my mm-hmm. favorite characters. But I, I don't know. And the thing is, it got really good reviews. So it's not like I think it's a bad movie. I just, hey. if it was, it, here's the thing. If it was, what's the next episode coming out? Nine? Yeah. Or, yeah. So like, if it was episode nine, I'm there like the first, heck, maybe the first showing that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because like, hello, it's episode nine. Yeah. But like, for why am I not doing it for this? Like, why didn't I go to Ant-Man and the Wasp when I went to Ant-Man? Yeah, right. Like, yeah, I don't know. Did I, I think so Ant-Man and the Wasp was going to be worse? I haven't actually even seen Ant-Man and the Wasp oh, yet. So I know, I, I know. I need oh, to see it. Oh, my God. It's so good. I I, I put it off, put it off, put it off. Then I watched it a few weeks ago, and I'm like, yeah. oh, my, why didn't I see this in theaters? It's yeah. so good. Like, yeah. uh, like I should ever doubt it's going to be good. Right. I mean, come on. The last Marvel movie before it was what? Black Panther? I mean, come on. Possibly, yeah. All all Marvel movies are basically right. good. Right. Even, like, Iron Man 3 that some people didn't like. It was still a good movie. It's just... yeah. Not like as, Iron not Man one and two set that bar so high, it was right. like you're you're not going to get right, back to right. that every time. Um, well, I try to temper at least my expectations of things, so I'm not royally disappointed going into stuff or at the end of stuff. The, it's very stuff, rare I mean. that I go to a movie and I am the the movie matches my hype level if I'm super hyped. Right. And I think that's that's the big thing. Like the only one it kind of exceeded my hype level was was the new Super Troopers movie. Yeah, buddy. That actually, I thought all the funny parts were going to be in the trailers, but I'm yeah. like, I can't help it. A Super Troopers is going to be yeah, amazing. Right? Right. Then I go, it was better than what I expected. Yeah, right? I'm like, I almost like this better than the first one. Yeah, it was right there. It, yeah, it, the fact that I could even say that out loud. Yeah, right. And then I went back and watched first. I'm like, the first one's still really good, but yeah. the second, there's something about this. There's yeah, one, all right. There's some quotes in that second one. Oh yeah. That oh yeah. Can't say on camera for you guys. Right. Might get my channel deleted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, yeah. so Ultimate Traveler w- w- was kind of like that game that I think people like me hyped it uh, maybe too much for right. some others, right. and then they bought it and they got disappointed, and that kind of drove it down. Right, uh, and that's kind of sad because it's always always a niche game. Yeah, and I I think I said this back then, like it's a great RPG, but it's niche. Mm-hmm. It's not like your Witchers of the world. It's not like Final Fantasies even. It, it, it's its own callback to classic RPGs with a modern visual twist a little bit and uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I really, really I enjoyed the storytelling, the music. Oh my god, the music. I mean got the soundtrack back here behind yeah. Eric. Like I oh the music's amazing. Um and I'm uh, yeah I'm honestly surprised it didn't win but uh, yeah the well the, the thing stuff. is the other soundtracks were really good too yeah. so uh, but, but that's the one category I thought it had a chance to win. Uh-huh. Uh, was 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 potentially best soundtrack. Yeah. But uh well it is what it is. Uh, then like I'm trying to think back on some other games I played this year because I played a lot um, not just at E3, like in uh, general, I played a lot of games. I know Overcooked Two was pretty decent. It oh, I, I don't it's know. so good. Did I? We we need I don't to pick even it remember up. if I played it at E3. I think you just watched me. I play think it. I just watched you play it. But we it need looked, to pick it, looked it up. Awesome. We need to pick it up. Yeah, because we really enjoyed Overcooked. Yeah. Um, Granted, we still haven't beat it, but I know. But Overcooked Two yeah. apparently is so much better is than it? the first Overcooked that no one even wants to go back and play Overcooked. Oh anymore. wow. Because Overcooked 2 is just... And now wow. they're releasing these free updates, and it's like, wow. Oh yeah, wow. I don't know why we don't have Overcooked. We need to get it into a live stream, and oh, I love Overcooked. Right. I don't know why. That's the thing. I think the reason I don't own it is because I kept waiting for us to find a time to live stream together, and yeah, it's right. just, yeah. here's the podcast. Here you yeah, go. right. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, you know, maybe sometime in, uh, maybe, maybe sometime in January. Because January, we have new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe and Travis Strikes Again coming out. Um, neither game that I think is uh, pushing the needle. Yeah, uh, it'll push. It'll it, like New Super Mario Bros. is going to push sales. That's going to sell well. But like, I played and beat that. I beat that and the DLC already. Yeah, I didn't play it with Peach or or, or the 
the Pichette thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bowsette thing. Bowsette thing? Uh, but... You know, I mean, it's still the same game, same level, same stages. Yeah. I've already beaten them all, so yeah. it's not it's not the end of the world for me. Uh, but like, maybe that's a good time. Maybe we can get some Overcooked two streams in because oh, Overcooked it's, it's so good. Maybe I can find it in a post holiday discount if I get some gift cards this holiday. Yeah, there you go. That would be sweet. There you go. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm I'm looking back at just what I played. Um, you know, for underrated, I mean, I mean that's I I don't want to say po- like here's the thing like. You mentioned Pokemon, and me as someone with the channel I have, it feels like Pokemon was underrated because I felt like because I oh, was excited yeah. for it, yeah, and like seventy percent of my fan base wasn't, yeah, it felt to me like it was an underrated game because so many yeah. people in my own fan base I was kind of arguing with all summer right, right, about right, it, right, right. yeah, um, no, I but get you. in general it still sold pretty well, yeah. So I don't know that that's the general consensus anymore now that it's out. And and I think the people, some of the people that were, you know, bashing it and then all of a sudden picked it up, you know, I've I've heard a few people have changed your hearts where it all of a sudden's like, you know, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So there is that as well. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think about other things I maybe had uh, that I played this year that I I because like that's one that's the thing it it feels personally like it was but. It, it was one of the biggest releases. I mean, literally, it was the fastest selling Switch game ever until Smash came out. So <laughs> right. it's like I can't right, say right, that right. Though it was the previous, you know, the yeah. second best selling, yeah, right. fastest selling Switch game ever was underrated. Yeah, right. Um, I'm, 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 I'm just trying. I'm trying to think, think of earlier yeah, right. this year. Some some games I played. Like I remember a bunch I played lately, but I'm trying to think of uh, some ones I did early in the year. You know, I'm I'm gonna give this one a shout out uh, because I don't think it's as bad as people say it is, uh, and. Hear me out on this argument because a lot of oh people boy. are going to be upset at me about this. Oh but, but, but I'm going to give Kirby Star Allies a shout out. Oh yeah, as yeah, one yeah. of the most underrated. That games was this that year. was fun. Here's the thing: people were mad at it because it's not difficult. Uh, it's a Kirby game. Kirby's never been difficult. Again, granted, yeah. it's been more difficult than this game. Yeah, but it's never been a super difficult franchise. Yeah, that's kind of the charm of Kirby. Yeah. Kirby was, was always been Nintendo's super easy platformer. Their hard platformer was usually like the, the, the Metroids or the Donkey Kong countries. Uh, oh their, their middle of the yeah. road where it has some easy and some challenge was Mario. Yeah. Uh, and then Kirby is on their easy spectrum. Like, hey, you want an easy one, you get Kirby. You get Yoshi. You get the kids into you it. Get, you can get the Yoshi ones as well. Those are usually pretty easy. Um, but the Kirby and Yoshi ones were always like a little clever. They, they had a little clever. They were all more about collecting right. uh, than the other side-scrolling uh, kind of games were. Yeah. The other side-scrolling games were about getting to the end of the level. These ones are about collecting everything. Alone. So the challenge right. was always in collecting everything. Right, right. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I think Kirby Star Allies gets knocked because it feels like, like in playing it, it feels like a game that was kind of thrown together uh, rather quickly. And it's definitely possible that it was. Yeah, it, it's entirely not only possible that it was, but I don't know. Like, <laughs> I I know we 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 make fun of like, fun of like the friendship circle and and, and, and all the <laughs> other fun. all the other different things you can do with your your friend characters in yeah. there. But uh, I honestly like the mechanic. I thought it was really neat. It works very very well in single player. Yeah, obviously it's more fun in multiplayer, but it works really well in single player. Uh, surprisingly, better than uh, than Triforce Heroes did. That's for sure. And I enjoyed Triforce Heroes, but like this is even better than that in terms of how it handled your your partner characters. Um, and I just I really I found my like I got to the end of the game, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I actually kind of like this. Then I go check on the internet, and everyone's like, oh, it's overrated. It's a piece of junk. It's a bad game. It's a, like it's a disgrace on the Kirby franchise. And I'm just like, I I'm not gonna say anything because I I really enjoyed Kirby Star Allies. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm sorry. Like it's just like. I, I felt like I might have got destroyed, like I did for being excited for Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. Really, really hyped. Oh, you're so wrong. You're everything wrong with the franchise. Everything wrong with Nintendo fans. Blah, blah, blah. Like I'm just like I didn't right. want to have that happen to me twice this year. So, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like so, but we're at the end of the year now. So I'm I ain't holding anything back. I think that is one of the most underrated games that came out on Switch this year. Um, now. This is where, like, we look back and we go, all right. So so we got the underrateds out of the way. What What's the game we actually enjoyed the most this year? Mm. Could be one of the underrateds. Or, I mean, may, maybe we have some, some back catalog <laughs> games that came into play this year. I am still enjoying Breath of the Wild. Oh, there it I is. I mean, I'm still enjoying it. There I literally it just played it for a couple hours today. Oh, it's such a um, good game. So, 
Um, uh, it's the game that keeps on giving. It does. It does. Um, again, I, you still got to go with... <laughs> oh, God. You still got to go with Ninjala because that was... Even though it's again, it's even though it's not out. I'm not gonna. The reason I'm not gonna say Ninjala is because yeah. on our next podcast when we do like uh, what we're looking forward to in 2019, yeah. uh, Ninjala's at the top of the pile. Yeah, it's above uh, Animal Crossing. It's above everything. Oh yeah, like, that's right. Animal oh, Crossing. Oh, yeah. oh boy, next year's packed. You're you're, you're getting. I'm getting, almost guaranteeing you're getting roasted in the comments right now. <laughs> I don't know. You've said. I have. I've been glancing at them, but yeah. I haven't really. Been. Yeah, yeah. Um, man. It, so why? Why are you, let's go, you know, we're a year and a half basically past yeah. when that game launched, and you had it at launch. Yes. So what's keeping you still playing it today, Breath of the Wild? God. Why in 2018 is it like, you know what, I can't help it. It's I, like I don't the best, know. It's like the best thing I've ever I, touched. Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> I don't know. The, the game, I, I mean, yeah, I, I'll sit down and play it for one one run through on my Switch, and then, yeah, I'm done for a while. But I, I think it's just because of the fact that I'm not playing it 24-7, 365, I, I think it, it, every time I play it, it's, it, it, it goes a little bit in between playing mm-hmm. sessions, so it's like, every time I play it, it's like, oh yeah, this is awesome, <laughs> oh yeah, this is awesome, oh yeah, this is awesome, I, I'm, no, I'm not worn out of it yet, I'm still only kind of in the uh, new game phase in a certain, to a certain extent, because I, I it, it does go a little bit of time without, in between me playing, Yeah. so I, I think that's why i'm still super hyped on it it's not i haven't gotten overdosed with it yet so this is where i'm gonna get blasted oh boy um because i'm torn obviously we have all the smash bros hype in the world right now i've been playing a lot of smash having a lot of fun but i'm gonna go like the game i've enjoyed the most on switch this year it's not exclusive Oh boy! Um, not not published by Nintendo, obviously. Oh boy! Uh, it's not a major AAA sixty dollar game. Oh gosh! Uh, and in fact, it's technically not even a twenty eighteen game. It actually was a twenty seventeen game that only came to Switch in twenty eighteen. Ah. Uh-huh. Then you might be thinking, well, then he's not talking about Wolfenstein two. You're right. I'm not. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that was sixty dollars. Shouldn't have been, but it was sixty dollars. Yeah. Um. Get ready. You ready for me to get blasted? Yeah. This is going to be funny. It's Fortnite. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and, and I hate saying that. I think only because... I'm, like, I'm not embarrassed that, I'm, that I enjoy Fortnite a lot this year. Um, I think it's been pretty obvious if you t- check into a lot of my live streams throughout the year. A, lo- a lot of my scheduled and random live streams were me playing Fortnite. Mm-hmm. There's a reason for that. I really enjoy it. And I'm, I don't know why... Because I'm still not good at it, so it's not that I'm getting like I'm better than I was, but I'm not I'm not great. I still suck at building. Um, there's certain weapons that I just refuse to use because I'm really bad with them, uh, and I haven't even played it a lot lately because I've been playing a lot of Smash. But and it's not like I'm like oh Fortnite's better than Smash. I, I I'm not gonna say that. It's just my personal enjoyment of this year has been great. Like a lot, I think a lot of people that dislike Fortnite. Now there are some people. Uh, uh-huh. Like we have some fans who have played it that you know they just don't get it. They don't like it. It's fine. You yeah. don't enjoy it. But I think a lot of the dislike of Fortnite is mostly what's happening to it outside of the game. Uh, well, I mean, inside of the game, you could talk about how you know the game it has some controversy right now. It's stole some dance moves. It's getting like, it, sued for it and all this stuff. It, and it, we'll it, see what happens because there's a lot of there's a lot of legal debate over if dance moves can even be copyrated. Right, blah, blah, right. Blah. Uh, yeah, so, well, I know for sure it's two of them. Uh, well, two, 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 two Millie, uh, and Backpack Kid. Yep. And also oh, it, it's uh, three, Alfonso. Yeah. So there's three dances the that are being. Yeah. So there's three. Well, dances. and the funny thing is, is Backpack Kid wasn't the first one to ever do the do the, the floss. floss dance. Yeah, I know. so I don't, I don't know where he thinks all of a sudden he's gonna get the why he can sue or sorry I I, I shouldn't say he his mother from what I've heard because they're trying to get it copyrighted. Yeah, but he wasn't the first one to do it. He's not the you know it, so it's yeah it's just a thing. Yeah. Uh so yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen with that. I don't even know where I stand on that. Uh, I you know I obviously think that no matter what Epic should have gave credit. Yeah, to where the, where the, where like what inspired the cultural phenomenon? Yeah, um, you know, but in one way you could do that is literally call the dance what it is, like, you know, because it's not copyrighted yet. Like the Carlton isn't copyrighted, so call it the Carlton. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know that seems more blatant, but hey, it's technically not a copyrighted dance yet. Yet, yeah. yeah. Uh, so 
I don't know. Anyways, uh, obviously, you know, the biggest but, issue is that someone took their dance moves, like the Carlton, and found a way the, to profit off it. No, no, they didn't. Yeah, these dance moves you buy with virtual currency. You literally spend money to get these dance moves. Oh, that's not what I've been reading. Yeah. I've been reading they don't, they're just with it, or you win the or you win something to get the dance moves. Yeah, from the battle pass, it's $10. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, yeah, just, so they, I'm, just, no, I'm yeah, just going yeah, off that, so That's the problem. It's not that the dance moves are in there. It's that this is the first thing to happen with those dance moves that's but, profiting but at the same point a billion could, dollar level. But at the same point in time, you could argue that you're not paying for the dance. You're paying for the opportunity to get the dance, but you're not actually paying for the dance specifically. You're paying for the content well, of you, the you can buy. Pass. You can buy specific, but even if you buy the, the, the Battle Pass, it's the, the thing is, is... Yeah, you have to earn it still. But part of the reason you might have bought that battle pass in the first place is because those dances are in it. Possible, but and it, you can't know that obviously. No, you. you and can't. I don't. Again, I I don't know the legalities. Of right, right, right. No, no, no. I'm, and I'm not. It I'm wasn't not, my move getting stolen. Like I'm. Well, so, so right. I'm going to steal but that. At the same point, Fortnite? but at the same know. point in time, anybody on the dance floor now? I'm gonna, now I'm going to be sued for dancing using the floss dance, even though I, I well, never that, that's the, what some that's, people yeah. were like saying, and it gets. I mean. It's, it's that way with music. You got to be so you can't you can't even acapella a song without having to worry about getting copyright claimed. Yeah, it's so dumb. Like if I just busted out like never going to give you up right now, yeah. I'd be copyright claimed. Yeah. Heck, the fact that I said it. Yeah. Probably. Might get like if I even want to reference the Kiki do you oh, love God, me? Yeah, right. And I had to just say that in monotone because if I had yeah, bothered right. to do it in the tone yeah. of the song, copyright claim. Yeah. Uh it, it's it, it, and and I think that's more the the concern isn't so much whether Epic has to pay yeah. people for the I mean sure maybe Epic should have just did it and just been the good guys but um, I don't know you know at least prevented it for, at least like preemptively doing it so it doesn't become legal like if they if they if Epic loses yeah the scary thing is that means copy that means dance moves can be copyright claimed which they can be uh the, there is a, a copyright special that said dance moves can be but they're very unique cases in how you pull it off this is that michael jackson would not be able if he was still alive to copyright the moonwalk mm-hmm. one he didn't create it he right. didn't invent it in the first right. place but uh that's that, it's more so than just you having to invent it there's also like certain create creative things that have to be able to to atone to it just like you do with any sort of mm-hmm. patent or anything yeah uh so um there's just a, a lot of, of legalese, and no one's really tried to do it because no one's really ever profited to this level off of it. Obviously, people make YouTube videos and how-to videos, and they make money, but like we're not talking billions. And, right. and that's what's happening with Fortnite is billions and billions and billions of dollars of Fortnite just taking things from pop culture and putting it in the game. I uh, think which, it's hilarious. Which, which it's, is, awesome. uh, it's helped make it popular, right. by the way. Right. Uh, and, and I understand for some people, um, they get annoyed uh like when okay this is really dumb but at my uh and one of my children's dances this year uh someone was doing the carlton yeah and i was like oh that's the carlton They're like no it's not it's a dance from Fortnite. and i'm just like oh, god and i think that's also what's causing some of these lawsuits because people are like they're disassociating these dance yeah. moves from their source material yeah. now it's all yeah it's all Fortnite dances now. yeah they're all Fortnite dances yeah you know yeah. it's not the floss anymore yeah you know it's a Fortnite dance yeah that's and, and for me, well, as someone who's older, I guess that bothers me. But like, I st- here's the thing: like, I, I don't really care about one, most of these dance moves. Yeah, the only one that the only one that bothers me is the Carlton because yeah. like the, the floss, floss can go die in a fire. I, 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 I don't understand. I don't understand that dance move. Who cares? <laughs> I, I, I whatever. I I don't know. I just find it dumb. Yeah, I I don't know. Like <laughs> now I'm getting roasted, but <laughs> no, it's okay. Like, the thing is, is um. It, it, Despite these controversies, I guess, um, I don't really care because I don't have most of these dance moves and most of the stuff anyways. Like, yeah, yeah, I bought a Battle Pass one time. I'll probably never buy a Battle Pass again uh, because I didn't earn enough currency to get the next one because I didn't play it. Oh, I should say I didn't play it enough. I didn't perform well enough yeah. <laughs> to climb up the battle ranks there you go. quick there you enough go. to get enough currency to buy yeah. the next one. Yeah. Um, so whatever. It happens. Uh, I really enjoy the game, though. Um, I always said I will never put money in it. I'll never put money in it. Then I bought the Battle Pass. And and people said, you know, why did you buy the Battle Pass when you said you would never spend money on Fortnite? And I'm like, because it was worth $10. It was worth more. The entertainment value I get from Fortnite is worth way more than $10. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a free-to-play game done right, in my opinion. Yeah. 
And I really like like all this stuff you buy. None of it gives you an advantage. Yeah. Uh, you can argue different costumes give you a camouflage advantages if you want, um, but in general, yeah. it really doesn't give you that big of an advantage. Uh, so beyond that, uh, and now they have like planes and a whole bunch of other crazy stuff going on. So who really? I mean, there's giant targets on your back all over the yeah, place right. now. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I honestly really enjoy the game. And I don't, you know, I'll probably still play it a little bit next year. I think next year, though, will be when, when I finally start to be like, all right, more Smash, uh, you know, more Animal Crossing, more Ninjala. Ninjala itself will probably end up literally. <laughs> That'll probably end me. up dominating everything. Um, maybe. We'll see if the final yeah. game lives up to it. Right. Uh, That's very true. We, we played it all where we had the same weapons, but they technically each character has their own weapon set, and I haven't played with that yet. Maybe I don't like it. Maybe it's unbalanced as hell. I have yeah. no idea. Um, but. Yeah, I I, th- I think that was probably. It feels weird saying that because this isn't a slide on Smash. It's just it's kind of like the Game Awards came out at the end of the year. Haven't yeah. spent enough time with it to be like, yeah, it's my favorite game this year. Yeah. Like, it's not though. I even to this day, like I'm thinking right now, like, oh, if I'm done with the stream and I'm gonna go stream again, um, like stream a game, I'm probably popping Fortnite in. And everyone's gonna be like, why aren't you playing Smash? I want to. Yeah, I want to play Fortnite. <laughs> so fair enough. Um. Anyways, that that that's just kind of and, and again, that doesn't mean that I think Switch is a Fortnite machine. I mean, granted, over right. half the people who have a Switch have Fortnite installed, so I, I'm in a pretty big audience. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, and it feel it does feel weird, like when you do do go into the voice chat on there. Um, it seems to always be with kids. Yeah. I know Fortnite's popular with kids. Yeah. I get it. It's free yeah. to play. Yeah. And you can play it on anything. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it always seems like any any game that has the chat feature, it, it always seems like you never get an adult. Because the only people who use the chat feature are, are kids. Yeah. Adults are like, no, we'll use Discord. Yeah, right. Oh, there's that. Or or it's like they get it, they get into the lobby and they realize it's all kids and they're just like, and mute and off and unplug and throw away my headset because <laughs> I ain't dealing with this. Yeah. Oh, geez, I'm in a random squad. Yeah. Forget that. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, let's see then, here. Then you have to then you have to listen to people. Oh, you're you're like seven. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, <laughs> great <okay>. insult. <laughs> what is, is there a moment from this year? Let's call it the the greatest cringe moment of the year. Now, I think <sighs> in 2017 for me, back back then, to just to give some perspective, 2017 for me had to be the Splatoon. Two. two. Oh god. Uh, that that to me I two. still even e- even to this day is like Don't forget the, the octopath. Big... Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some cringe. So again, here we are in twenty eighteen. Oh, cringe moment. Nintendo. Something Nintendo related. Cringe moment. And you were at E three. You watched all the press conferences I, I did. Well no did I? No, I was oh, at no, 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 but you watched E3. the Nintendo one. I was at E three. For a lot of those, the E3 experience for a lot of those. Yeah, but you were at you oh. were on the Nintendo stream. Yeah, because yeah, so. we went together that day. Yeah, because that was the first day of the show floor. So. Right, right, right. Oh God, I don't know if there was a whole lot of massively cringe moments like there was last <sighs> year. I'm t- I can't think of any off my head. You can't I, think of one well, cringe. I, I'm guessing you're gonna say something. And I'm gonna. Oh my God, how the hell did I forget about that? Um, but God, seriously. Hey, people who are watching the uh, watching this live. Oh God! Thank you so much for not being a ten dollar backer, unless you're ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, what's your guys' g- g- Eric needs some re- needs some refreshers. Give oh, us some cringe God. moments. Cringe, cringe moments. moments from 2018 why, for Nintendo. Why am I not? The, the problem with me is I'm thinking of a lot of cringe moments that happened recently, but all of it involves uh, Fallout 76, which wasn't on Nintendo. Oh, yeah. There's a lot well, of cringe well, with that. You could also argue that Sonic Fox was a massive cringe moment too, oh. but yeah, you could. But it's again, it's not necessarily it Nintendo necessarily related. Necessarily Nintendo related, right? Yeah. Um, all the Game Awards. Yeah, right. There's a lot of cringe. There's a lot of cringe at the Game Awards every year. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Even though I, f- I like, even like I said, even though I found it funny, it, I can definitely see how people could definitely see it oh, as a cringe man. moment. Um, but. Uh, Huh? God, I can't. I, you're trying to ask me to remember back. I, to I, I have a really obvious moment. Yeah, pr- but I I don't want to default to it because I think it's the only moment you'll be able to think of. <laughs> you underestimate or you overestimate me. I probably won't even be able to think of that one. Uh, it's related to the game awards. 
F the Oscars. It, 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 <laughs> it involved more than just Nintendo, but Nintendo oh, was God. involved in it. Oh God! When all three of them were on stage. Yeah, they all came on stage. Remember the whole time, like, oh, they announced a crossover, oh, yeah. crossplay. Yeah, uh, these characters are coming to Smash or something crazy. Yeah, and it was just like this pre-canned, super lame. Oh yeah. to the Game Awards yeah. speech. Yeah, yeah, like super lame. Yeah, it was kind of. Like, it was. It was a nice moment for gaming. Yeah. I think it was. No, it was an important thing that happened. Right. But it's just like, God, it would have been nice if there could have been like something with a crossover, right? Or some sort of crossplay game, right? Like talk about games could be on all three platforms or something, right? Right. No, but, for oh, sure. For man. sure. Yeah. No. I'll give you that one. That one is good. Yeah. yeah it's definitely kind of cringy. So for me, Ish. for me, this is, it's Nintendo related, but it's, <laughs> it, this isn't just my, like my, my, my cringe, cause this is my cringe person of the year. Okay. Philip Mewson. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. His. Yeah. In particular, not that he plagiarized and did all this bad stuff. Obviously, that naughty, naughty, naughty. Right. That's not cringe. That's just stupid. Right. The, the non-apology his... apology. Right. Those are the cringe-worthy moments. The non-apology apology. The video he has deleted because of how bad that apology. Yeah. It wasn't even an apology. He didn't call it an apology. Right. But like the everyone in the industry does it this way. Yeah. As the entire industry, industry is going, like, what the no, hell are you talking? No, we don't. None of us read re- other people's reviews before we make our own. None of us. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah. And even if we do, we we it's, say we did. And we... No, they don't. Cool. Just don't. Yeah, not right. until the reviews are done. Right, right, right. Like... Right. Oh, man. Like, to gain knowledge, like, the only thing you ever need to look up on the internet when you're reviewing a game, especially a game that's a stand, like Dead Cells. It's not from a series. Yeah. So the only thing you need to look up is who published it, what's the release date, maybe what engine and it uses. I could understand also if there's any differences between consoles. It's, but it depends on if you're reviewing here's it for the a thing. single console. If you're reviewing for a single console, it doesn't yes, really it matter. Doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, but if you're worried about comparisons, guess what? Buy it for buy the other for consoles. Your... Right. Because if you watch somebody else's thoughts on how it is on other consoles, you are now having your thoughts altered by somebody else. No, no, and he works at IGN. Say, right. They had copies of it on every system. No, 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 for sure, for <laughs> sure. But no, I, no, I'm saying like gameplay wise, what the actual mechanics? If there's different mechanics per, so well, that's just a different game, right? At that point. I don't yeah, think that's. But, I mean, and it's interesting to say that because you could argue that might have happened with Wii U since you can like manage inventory on the screen yeah. compared to other systems and stuff. But. Right, right. Or something like that I could see, you know, looking up ahead of time. Just to, the only just thing to that really seems that, to, man- to be different but, between games on Switch and everyone else is just resolution and frame rate. Yeah. So Because it's a different type of hardware. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, no, for um, sure. And obviously, you know, then you have the dock to the handle performance. With indie games, it's not really an issue. But uh, that's obviously something to take into consideration. Yeah. But yeah, the like everything to do with Philip Mewson was yeah, just yeah. That was anytime he's opened his you're mouth, right, you're right. In defense of himself, I, like I said, you overestimate me. I can't it's think all of cringe, but it's all cringe. That's why I said he's the cringe person of the yeah. year. It's all he like can't just come out and say I was wrong. Yeah. Still to this day, he's in denial. He did anything wrong. Yeah. Still to this day, he's not apologized at all for doing wrong thing. He apologized to people affected by his actions, but not apologizing for actually doing Doing the the actions. actions. It's like, I'm sorry for my colleagues at IGN. I'm sorry for Boomstick Gaming. Oh, sorry for what? That you got him almost 100 or over 100,000 subscribers because of what you did? I mean, he seemed to benefit pretty nice from this. And I think IGN reached out to him and paid him. Right. So... I mean, you don't really need to apologize because you helped his channel grow, but you should be apologizing for stealing his content. Yeah. Instead of, oh, whoever was affected by this controversy. Yeah. So you admit there's a controversy. What did you do? Wait, wait. So what did you do wrong? Well, also. Did you steal? No. And then a challenge. Could, oh, that was the best one. Oh, God. One. Yeah. That was the best one. Oh, that Jason Schreier guy or whatever. And then Jason Schreier's been in the news for other reasons, but the the I challenge anyone out there nothing on my channel has ever been plagiarized and I challenge anyone out there to prove otherwise the next day <laughs> here's a list of like 18 different videos that are plagiarized on your channel from before you were hired at IGN the, the internet is undefeated it's like I can't believe not only do you not apologize you have the like that might even be the bigger cringe on it you don't apologize yeah. but then you have the balls yeah, right? the balls <laughs> to challenge Kotaku and the internet and the internet. 
to prove that you oh, did that this God. is the only time you've ever plagiarized. It, again. The, after it, admitting, after saying you didn't plagiarize in the first place. Right. It's like, you never said you plagiarized, and now you're challenging the internet to prove it. And they did. Yeah, oh, yeah. The <laughs> internet is undefeated. <laughs> they, they destroyed you. Word for word readings of some people's reviews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh, man. Yeah. It's it nuts. was bad. Not just structure. Word for word. Oh. Yeah. Like, the, like entire, like, three paragraphs in a row just literally transcribed from another video and just read. Like, yeah. oh, man. Anyways, that has to be the cringe moment for me. Just yeah. because um, yeah. I know it's not Nintendo themselves or, like, a, people who made a game for them. But it's still, it's one of those things that it was in, in the community. It was with a major figurehead for uh, Nintendo of IGN, the biggest video game site in the world. Uh, and man, oh man, I, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be sitting with me for a while just because it's my, it's in, it's right in the wheelhouse of my own profession. What's up? Cringeworthy moment. Nintendo's online service. Oh, <laughs> snap. I did oh, come up with did one. It. I did, did come it. up with one. He did it. Which part of it? Which part? I, of it? Not, not well, like we thought was bad. The services, but right, right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, just over, well, first off, just overall in general, um, and then I love what was the what was the three phrase saying they had more fun, more oh god, god what was that? They still use yeah. it, and I and I kept reading it. And I'm just like, what? None of this is actually true of your service. <laughs> well, the fact that you know you're only getting three NES games, and there's no month, new games announced. Yeah. Like yeah. we got ones in J- in December, and now yeah. we don't know when we're getting more again. Oh really? Yeah. The people are hoping <laughs> this is because they're going to drop SNES in January, but I mean, you can just tell us you're dropping SNES. It's not like, oh, surprise, it's January 1st, here's SNES games. That's cool and everything. You could have told us. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, God. Hold on. I think you just literally have to Google and send a Switch online service, and it'll be an yeah, image. Right. Uh, let's see here. Um, Nintendo Switch Swatch. Yes, that too. Or another cringe moment that involved Nintendo Switch Online. Um that uh, in a lawsuit Nintendo has filed, apparently uh, they're changing the name of the eShop to the Nintendo Switch Online Shop because that's totally a better name than eShop. <laughs> sure. Anything that anything that involves yeah. okay, images. Oh, okay, I know what the cringeworthy saying. moment that uh, that uh, the fact that you. Oh, how about the the special offers? That's what I'm st- oh, yeah. oh, yeah. talking you get, about. Yeah. You get this. You get the special offers. What's the special offer? You get to give us more money. Yeah, right. Oh, is it for oh, like a big discount on the game? No. no. It's for $60 <laughs> NES controllers that right. are only usable with the games and online service. Technically yeah. not true. Some people have proven you can kind of sort of use them outside of it, but they're not really functional. Yeah. So nice, nice. it doesn't really work. But <laughs> so you get the online service for the privilege of yes. controllers that only work with the online service. Yes. So I'm like. That is like not a special offer. That is that is just you selling a product. <laughs> oh man, where is it? I know it's somewhere. Enhance your gaming enhance, enhance your, your gaming, gaming experience. Yeah, right. Nintendo Switch well, Online. Oh. <laughs> more games, more features, more fun. <gasps> more games? I mean you get the NES games, yeah, I suppose. I guess, yes. More features. Not, voice. Actually you took voice you took Sh- away features from f- from like Octopath when or not Octopath, uh, oh good god, um. Well, here's basically the thing. all of all of the games you were able to play the for feature, free the online. Feature, the feature is online play. Yeah, that you paid wall that was been free right, forever. Exactly. So you didn't make it better. You didn't games. make it better. You didn't give us dedicated servers. You didn't do anything to make it better. You're yeah. charging us money for the uh-huh. same crappy online we had before. More fun. Is it? <laughs> yeah, is it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> I mean, I have the Nintendo Switch online because I, I want to play online games with you guys and do live streams. But it's like, I, I, I don't. I mean, the only fun thing is I'm playing games online, but <laughs> the online's not good. Like now, you have people paying for a subscription service, and you're not making the online better. Oh, actually, so yeah, cringe were you brought it up? Cringe were cringe worthy moment. The um voice chat. I mean, seriously, how terrible! Good God. How hard is it to have local voice chat on the Switch and also have it on your phone? How hard is that? Switch has Apparently it. Extremely. Switch has it. We're doing Fortnite all the time. Has local voice chat capabilities. 
it's not like an impossibility on the system. It's not one of those, oh, there's systems not like there's not enough memory or nothing. Yes, okay, if Fortnite can do it, anything can do it. Nintendo Generally just doesn't up. want to. Yeah. They just yeah. don't want to. Oh, right, right. oh, you could also I'll say cringeworthy moment. And this is something people aren't really talking about much. Last year, do you remember this? Nintendo promised like at eighteen different iterations of talking about the Nintendo Switch Online last year when it was still scheduled to come out. Yeah. It got delayed to fall or yeah. winter and then got yeah. delayed to this year. Yeah. Before the delay to this year, Nintendo said like at 18 different events that the Nintendo Switch Online app, the largest, biggest feature of it had nothing to do with voice chat. Yeah. You were going to be able to schedule events oh, yeah. and set up yeah. play dates yeah. with friends later even when you weren't home. Yeah. That was the idea. Yeah. Really, really cool and interesting feature. Yeah. A year later, by the way, this was supposed to launch like in summer of last year yeah. and then delayed to fall, and they kept telling us this is going to be one of the primary features. A year later, it's when we finally ready. get the service, it still doesn't exist. <laughs> and now they won't even talk about it. It's ah, not even a thing they're promising. Anymore. Right. It's more like, we had this idea. We suck at implementing actually cool ideas. <laughs> so we're just going to charge you for what you already have. Oh, God. Have a good day. Fantastic. Have a good day. Oh, oh, we're, we were supposed to get multiple companion apps for games. Right. How come Splatoon 2 is still the only game yeah. with a companion app? The only one. The only one. Oh, I'm sorry. Technically, Pokemon has one. If you download the entirely separate Pokemon app, it's got nothing to do with the Nintendo Switch Online. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't understand. That, that, I, I don't know. Maybe that's a bigger cringe than Philip Mewson. You could argue, cringeworthy moment, Bowsette. One could argue. One could. A, 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 do you you can argue it both ways. I think some of the some of the things that spun off Bowsette, yes, yeah, definitely cringeworthy. But uh, yeah, no, it, it, I think it's funny as hell. Uh, so we we did cringeworthy moment. Okay. We did uh, obviously you know um, underrated game. Then we did like our our favorite game we played. Now I want to say like what's uh, what's a moment that we uh, can be proud of. What, what what's a good on you Nintendo? Good on you for whatever, heading into 2019. Something that happened this year that maybe you could be like, hey, you know what? You actually did right here. Good job. I guess I'll start with one. Maybe mm-hmm. it'll get the ball rolling with you. Okay. Yep. They rescinded the Nintendo Creators Program. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's... Um, should have never existed. Uh, it was a terrible idea. Didn't treat it like a normal MCN. They, they did it like their own thing, and it was just dumb. <laughs> And on, on top of that, it led to lots of copyright claims of people who weren't using the service. And even if you used the service, you could still get copyright claimed, but the game wasn't whitelisted, which prevented you from covering a ton of games. You couldn't cover Smash games at all uh, because they weren't whitelisted. Uh, why use third-party characters? And Nintendo's like, we're done with this. We're done. <laughs> they got rid of it, and they said, you know what? You can freely use our trailers. You can freely use any gameplay you want. Heck, you can freely use the audio from the games. Yeah. Uh, what you cannot do, the only thing you cannot do is you can't just rip music tracks and upload them. Fair enough, uh, yeah. it, anytime you do use footage or music or whatever, there has to be some sort of commentary aspect to it. It has to basically there has to be some originality to what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so I think even Fair if enough. you even if you spliced up things and did like highlight clips, like we did with uh, the death stuff, I think they yeah. might even allow that just because yeah. uh, you're at least you're, you're not just doing straight on, on like ten minutes through of non editing well, gameplay. Right. 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 And. Uh, to that though too is yeah we may not have been saying anything over the top of but there's background noise. Well, that was that was E3. Over, yeah, they could, usually don't get E3 footage claimed anyway, so right. it's all off camera. Right. But uh, in general, I don't know that they would necessarily go after those. That technically, according to the rules, those might not be allowed. But I've I've seen people do highlight clips and not get yeah not get claimed. So yeah. uh, Nintendo's basically backed off. And said, look, we're not we're not auto claiming. We're not doing any of this crap anymore. Hooray! Uh, or you can now use this just like you can use Ubisoft games. And there's still other companies, by the way, that still claim and don't let you use stuff. Ubisoft's one though that doesn't. And I discovered that with Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle because oh, uh, I could use any footage game. I wanted from that, any music I wanted from that because uh, Ubisoft is the one that has to file the, the copyright for that, not Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ubisoft doesn't care. So, you, you know, so that's why I compare it to that. Like You can just do whatever you want, which is a boon for Nintendo. It's a boon for Nintendo creators heading into 2019. It's going to lead to changes at this channel, and I know it's already led to some changes. Uh, I've used several trailers already that I could use to be able to never touch. Yeah. Um, you know, they, oh yeah, nothing. They don't want you to just. They don't want you to direct rip trailers and upload it to your channel. No, which yeah. makes me wonder. Yeah. Why can Game Explain do it? Game Explain. I mean, it's a criticism some people have of you is that you just rip trailers and upload them. I know that's not all you do. Yeah. But 
Yeah. Nintendo says you can't do it, but you guys still do it. They probably. Have I know some, they're whitelisted. I was gonna say like they crazy, probably have some background. But, I mean, going on behind I, the scenes I get that. that. They they're, they're the biggest Nintendo channel. Nintendo's probably never, unless they do something really dumb, right? Um, drop an M bomb or something, which yeah. I don't see them ever doing, right? Um, I don't think Nintendo's ever going to come down hard on them. They're literally the biggest Nintendo channel in the world. Yeah, you know, they're not going to touch them because it's too much free advertising for Nintendo. Uh, exactly, and I think Nintendo's finally realizing, hey, we can get free advertising for this. They probably look at it, why should it just be Game Explained? Yeah. Thank you! It yeah, shouldn't right? be. Yeah, right? yeah. Everyone should be able to use the footage the way the Game Explained does. Yeah. It should just be Game yeah, Explained. right. You'd be such a bigger audience if everyone wasn't having to be funneled to Game Explained. Yeah. Because there's tons of people that don't like them. I like Game Explained, but I understand yeah. why some people don't. Yeah. And, like, I'm not on... Here's an example. You love Nintendo Prime. It's probably because you enjoy my thoughts on things. I'm not on Game Explained, so that's not going to replace me. Yeah. I mean, you can still get all your trailers there. Yeah. <laughs> They can, they can, or maybe they're gonna stop now. I don't know. Yeah, I, I only ever watch their discussions and then their analysis videos. Yeah, because they they do some really cool analysis analysis videos. Yeah, which by the way, something I thought about doing, but God, they're a lot of work. <sighs> yeah. It's editing. It's not the, so much the pick. Like I can, I can go through a trailer and pick out little details and relate them to older Nintendo games or things yeah. in the franchise or like yeah, make yeah, theories sure. and guesses. I can do that. Yeah. But you have to edit it to point out this stuff. Right. And God, I'm not good at that. Yeah, right. I, I need a professional editor yeah. to do stuff like that. That's probably why I will never bother with it because I'm going to, I'll do mine and the gaming spin will come up with theirs and I'll just feel like their production value is so much higher on it. Yeah. Like this video here, I feel like our podcast is higher production than when they do like discussions because their discussions are just two people chatting with a still image or with like, you know, voiceover gameplay. Got your beat, Game Explain. Ooh. Just saying. Got you beat here. Mark one. Mark one for uh, Nintendo Prime. Yeah, buddy. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many changes Nintendo is making that's actually going to benefit me specifically. I, I, I mean, um, I don't really know a whole well, lot Well, one thing in the 20... What, what we can say is they announced a lot of games for 2019. Yeah. Um, That doesn't fix anything this year, right. obviously. Right. Uh, But, I mean... It is looking better than... I mean, just what what games do you know are coming next yeah, year? Yeah, look. Oh, God. Why do you do this to me all the time? Just off the top of your head. I'll add more. Yeah. I know you should be able to think of at least one or two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we mentioned one already. You overestimate me. <laughs> well, these are major IPs yeah. that you've played, including one you've already played this year. What, Ninjala? <laughs> well, okay, there's one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Another one that I've already played this year. Oh, I know there's another Pokemon game coming out. There you out. go. That's what hey, I was referencing. There's yeah. a uh, Animal Crossing coming out. Boom. Um, God. A franchise you're always interested in but never play? Strategy game? Oh, God. Involves three houses? Sure. <laughs> God. Might have fire in the name? A fire Emblem? Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. I see. Fire Emblem, okay. three, three houses. houses. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, There's one that has mechs in it? Oh, uh, Machina. Uh, D- Damon X Machina. Machina, okay. I think. Machina, I think whatever, it is. Machina. Machina. whatever it is. Whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. Um... There was another one by Isn't that company that makes a Pokemon game coming out. Oh yeah, Towns. That yeah, that is cool. That that one did look good. Um, See, I I know he knows. That's why I'm just giving hints. Is At- I don't know if I even know them all. Atlas come out next year, or is that already out? At- I don't know. What you're or, talking um, about. not Atlas. Um, what the hell is the one that I that I watched at E3 that or that at, at the EA exp- at, at EA Play? The one that I was pissed wasn't actually a full. Anthem. Anthem. Thank but that's you. not on Switch. Right. Okay. But still, it. I, yeah, that should, <laughs> come, that should come next year. Well, maybe it will be on yeah. Switch. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, there's a certain been racing game we played at E3. Team Sonic. Yeah. Um. God. Well, I know. I mean, here's one you could just say off the top of your head, even though it's not announced yet. Yeah. Just Dance. Uh, 20, 2020. 2020. 2020. I'm sure NBA 2K might be back. Should be back. Um. I, I don't know how, how many more it's sports nine. games there are. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sure FIFA, FIFA will come might, back. Might, yeah. might come back. This yeah, I'm sure FIFA will probably come back. Um, There's a certain sequel to a really gory game where you kill Doom demons. Doom 2? <laughs> Doom 3? Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal. Is that 3? What? That uh, no, it, the series was rebooted oh, gotcha, with Doom okay. 2016. Uh, gotcha, so this is gotcha, the second okay, one. Okay, yeah, okay. Doom Eternal. Okay. That's coming to so Switch. Doom. Uh, yeah. You know, you never know. Metroid Prime 4 might be coming. You never know. 
Um, don't get people's. I know. <laughs> You're getting their hopes up. I know. I You're said might be. I said might be. Um. Hell dang. Oh, Yoshi. Oh, there Yoshi. it is. Yoshi. I was wondering if you could remember Yoshi's Crafted World. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think now because now we're getting down to the, like where, where I actually have to really start thinking about what what else is coming next year. Um, and most of those are Nintendo IPs. I mean, I'm sure there's a boatload of <laughs> indies that are coming. But uh, this is this is where, where Google comes in handy. You're yeah, right. Well, obviously, it's the Super Mario Bros. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. Yep. yep. Um, trying to think of other name, other games we've mentioned so far. Oh, Trials Rising. Oh, okay. Yeah, Trials. Yep. Those, oh, those yeah. One of the one of the uh, game that's releasing on on January 18th. I actually just talked about it in Prime News. Um, Travis Strikes Again. Oh, No yeah. More Heroes. No More Heroes. Right. Yep. Again, I don't know if this is going to come out west. Next year, there, there's a new Digimon game coming. Oh, really? Digimon Survive, but I don't know if that's coming West or not. Interesting. I mean, the fact that it has a, an English name, maybe it is. I yeah. Don't know. I, don't, I haven't follow, followed it enough to really know. Um, trying to, I swore there was one that I'm not thinking of right now. Um, I'm trying to, I think, yeah, I think what, I, for Nintendo. Yeah, just, just some games coming out that I'm not. Th- oh, oh, duh, <laughs> Luigi's Mansion Three. <laughs> How did we forget that? I one? knew there was something yeah. big we were yeah, forgetting. Right? Right. Luigi's Mansion Three. Yeah. That's the. I'm pretty sure that's, that's the, the big biggest one. We're one Dragon Quest Eleven yeah. is probably oh, all, oh, all, all the Final, Final Fantasy Fantasy games coming. Yep. yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bayonetta Three, maybe, possibly. possibly. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, probably got as good a chance as Metroid, I guess. Crash Team Racing. Crash Team Racing. Yeah. Forgot that one. Yeah. V Rally Four. Um, a new version of RPG Maker. Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Oh God! How can we forget that one? Three. Yeah. Yes, the Black Order. Yeah. Oh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered. Oh, God. We Why? know we're getting that. Yeah. That's a, like what a the, for sure day what, one. What? what? Saints Row the Third's getting ported. How did we? How did Mortal we Kombat 11? The, yeah. <laughs> Even though I'm not interested in it. Right. Technically, Pikmin 4 still exists somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Hey, I thought it though. was coming out. Dang it. Darius Cosmic Collection. Um, Tales of uh, Vesperia, Definitive oh, Edition. Okay. Oh, Shimmer God of Tensei 5. Supposed to arrive next yeah, year. There you go. Uh, supposed to. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Yokai Watch Four, okay. which people were saying looked more impressive than Let's Go Beach or Let's Go Eevee at the time. So we'll okay. see. Okay, all right, all right. See how that turns out. Um, Dragon Quest Builders Two. I know some okay. people are really excited for that one. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. All these dang Final Fantasy games. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's so many of them yeah, right. that are coming next year. Uh, we did get Pocket Edition this year, by the way, guys. I know that was a correction in one of my videos. I talked about next year. They, it landed this year. I'm I'm well aware. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, that might be all the major ones. Major I think. major ones, yeah. Like, there's obviously a bunch of indie games and stuff, but I think that's yeah. all. That's all the big ones. Well, that we know of. Well, sure. uh, what uh, uh, out of all the ones to talk about, which one? You since you won't be here next week, I, I won't talk about mine. I'll wait till next week to talk. But for you, what are you excited for for 2019? Which which? The, give, give me three. Give me three mm. games that. Well, let's put it this way: three games you're excited for, and then what's the only game you're gonna buy since you only. <laughs> Again, he still hasn't bought Smash Bros. Yeah, yeah, there is that. Um, so, I mean, the only fantastic. game he bought this year was what, Pokemon? Yeah, it's a definite possibility. I think that is a definite possibility. Last year, I know you got Mario plus Rabbids. Yes. Odyssey yes. and Zelda. Yes. This year. Oh, and, and, and uh, Lego. Oh, um, you got a Lego game. Yes, it I did. forgot about I don't that. remember. Okay. Lego City, Undercover. Lego oh, Undercover. Oh, yeah. Lego City, yeah, Undercover. Yeah. That's a good game. Yeah, yeah. That's a good game. Um, I played it on Wii U. That's why I didn't get yeah, it for Switch. yeah. Um, Luigi's Mansion three. Yes, I know you like Luigi's Mansion. Okay, that's, yeah. that's, that's top three. Okay. Um, the Luigi's Mansion three, Luigi's Mansion three, and Luigi's Mansion. Three. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Then that's the one I'm getting. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which one are you getting? A, B, or C? Yeah, right. Ninjala, for sure. No. Oh. I'm, pr- I, you know, and th- that's the thing. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get both of those games for sure. Well, just like I think you'll eventually get smashed. Oh, yeah. Ever I've, finish yeah. one of the games you have. <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> there is that. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. If, I know for sure those two. I And that's the thing. It's like those two are, I think, for me, head and heels above everything else. almost everything else. Sure. Um, so I may not have a top three. Not excited for new gem Pokemon? I mean, I know we eh. haven't seen it yet. That's the thing. Yeah. We haven't seen it. We know it's going right. to have a crap ton of Pokemon in it. And then we can do about that. As much as that yeah. might turn us off. Right. But we haven't seen it yet. Right. So we no, don't no, really know no, what no, it no. is. For sure. For sure. I, I mean, I might play the demo. And then, then again, if, the if demo, there's a demo. Hopefully there's a demo. If there's a demo. Yeah. 
but then after again, all the leaks, who knows? But then again, be a demo. but then again, that the demo that of what Moon that we played was. I don't know if it was which, really which indicative. What? Indicative Moon, Ultra was it Ultra Moon that we uh, played? Oh, we played Sun and Moon. It was the Moon demo. Yeah, for the Moon demo. So and that was I don't know if it was very indicative of the game, but the the demo was garbage. Um, okay. So, I remember that one. So even nice. if I do play the demo, it, I may think the demo's garbage. The game could be good. Sure. But um, golly, I think the I, like I said, I think those two are just so head head and heels above everything else that I'm I'm. Okay. No, well, that, that, that's. I think those that's, two that's that really are fine. those are definitely two that I'm going to get for sure. Yeah. No. No. That's that's great. Um, so I guess I, I want to spend the, the last part of this podcast. And it's kind of like a 2018 interview. Um, do you have like a favorite podcast episode that we did this past year? Cause like this is the year the podcast really became a staple right. because right. while the podcast has been the OG content, it's been here since day one of Nintendo prime before we were even on YouTube. The thing is that this is the year that it became the weekly thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it started yeah. technically last year, like the last month. Yeah. But or was that like November and December? Yeah. But uh, this is like the year when it started to become a staple at the channel. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And there's legit people. This is when our Patreon blew up because of it. Because everyone, you know, the 37 people I think we have on Patreon that came to yeah support us. Yeah. Although Mark Greenberg, I, I know you saw some of this earlier. What happened, bro? <laughs> what happened, bro? You Where were the at, OG. Bro? You were the OG, and now you're not even part of the crew. <laughs> Where you at, bro? <laughs> What's going on, bro? Um, still love you. Anyways, um, hey, do you have a favorite episode? Ah, God. Smashcast was fun. Oh, the Smashcast. Smashcast was a lot of fun. It was a lot of, I mean, a lot of good guests. Yes. All of them. Yes. And the arguments. Oh, for sure. Me against OJ. <laughs> you guys, you guys want another Nate versus OJ debate. And it was one that actually happened before the actual debate. Yeah. It happened on the Smashcast yeah. about the dang GameCube controller. And then it happened again on the Smashcast debating about items in competitive Smash. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was one of the most heated debates yes. I think have ever happened. But, like, it was all love. It was all good. Right. No, no, for sure. Um, um yeah. Um, two different perspectives coming in. It was really interesting. Even though I keep losing all of them, our betting specials are generally fun. Uh, even there, though, there again, I keep, I keep cast, losing them. <sighs> that Smashcast needs more views, yeah, man. Right, right. Oh, um, man. I mean, so many I, there's episodes. There's so many episodes when you have almost... Well, this date, this is last year's. What do we, I, I'd say we'd probably have, what, 45 episodes, probably? Well, <laughs> should have 52. Well, right. <laughs> We right. probably have, like, yeah, it would probably be 45, 46. There were some weeks we skipped, uh, including one week this month, um, and, and stuff like that just because it's not feeling good uh, or, you know, just other things came up. We, we tried our best to keep it weekly. Hopefully in 2019 we'll, we'll actually hit 52 or 52 weeks mm-hmm. um, and, and be good then. But, well, I mean, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Right. Who knows? Can't predict the future. Maybe maybe we get bought up by a big entity and we oh. move into a massive studio oh, yeah, and we get a buddy. team of editors because everyone wants to make my content better, right? And then yeah. they fire me when it doesn't work. Right. And I get nothing. No, that's not yeah. good. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of really great episodes we did. Um, Smashcast is obviously way up there for me. Uh, I think what's interesting, too, is uh, the, the podcast... Um, is it's basically the I don't want to say it's the only piece of content I care about because <laughs> it's not, but it is uh, a very special piece of content to me. Uh, yeah, I have other content where I talk to fans, other live streams mm-hmm. I do, other um, you know now, now I have the Prime Answer series um, and, and and a lot all the news videos and all whatever I have a zillion different pieces of content I do and now I'm working on a review and maybe that'll become more of a regular thing. If you want it to become a regular thing, head over to patreoncom Prime, get us to our three hundred dollar goal, and there will be game reviews every month. But uh, it's this podcast is. I view this as, like, no matter what happens at Nintendo Prime, like, if I, you know, I have to go get a different job, my computer blows up, I don't know, something happens. So, <laughs> something bad happens, and I just can't do YouTube really anymore. I think this podcast is just going to continue to live on. I don't think this podcast is ever going to go away. We have to go back to using our phone to record. <laughs> um, I have to go back to using the Blue Yeti, or if we have to, like, use the audio on the phone, God forbid. Yeah, right. Um, I, I don't care what happens. You know, my house burns down. Whatever. Um... Because technically, at this exact moment, I don't have renter's insurance. It doesn't kick until January 1st. So, 
<laughs> Not, <laughs> hopefully nobody comes and arsons my house yeah, between right? now and then, and then I lose everything. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's interesting just because uh, this podcast to me, one, obviously there's you um, and, and being able to sit down with my best buddy and talk about games that uh, <laughs> we just don't get to do as much as we did when we were kids. Yeah, right. You know, whenever we do chat, it's always about my kids. Yeah. My kids are a big topic or, yeah. you know, about me and my fiance or about yeah. you and work or whatever, yeah. whatever's sure. going on in our, our, our personal lives. But um, this is like the part of me that makes it like reminds me of how passionate I am about gaming. Even if uh, like, like as an example, I've always wanted to add a segment to the week. Like, hey, what have we been playing lately? Right. Like a lot of podcasts have. And it's like, well. Okay, the answer for Eric would have been Breath of the Wild and nothing else <laughs> for the last week. Yeah. Uh, for me, it would have been, I don't think I turned on my Switch the past week to play anything at all. Yeah. Uh, that's not technically true. I did play Smash for one hour. Um, and I I uh, found out that I'm actually not half bad with Toon Link. Or oh. not Toon Link. I'm sorry. Uh, Young Link. Ah. But uh, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> the, the, the point is, like, I don't do it because, um, one, that we just have the weeks like that where we, we don't get to play anything. And then, two... Uh, I, it's not really like, I think the thing I like most about what I do, uh, at the channel is I, I like the, I like gaming culture. Mm-hmm. I like the conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like talking to the fans. I uh, and I feel like this is kind of like a culmination of all of that. It's, it's 100% fan supported. That's why no matter what happens, this, this would persist because you guys are making it persist. We had a goal a long time ago and we hit that goal super fast after we made it. Mm-hmm. And that was, we put up a goal. Hey, if we hit a hundred dollars on Patreon, we'll make this weekly. Didn't think we were going to remotely come close to yeah, it. Right. We have been consistently over a hundred dollars on Patreon for pretty much ever since we put the goal up. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have been uh, over the two hundred dollar mark uh, for a large chunk of this year as well. Just like not last month or this month, but for a large chunk of this year, we've been over that mark as well. And it's it, it's encouraging to me to see like even if we we're only ever talking to an audience of twenty people or the audience of thirty four people that support us on Patreon, I don't really care. That's thirty four people that give a shit about what you yeah. and me have to say yeah, about right. video games. Yeah, right. Probably two of the worst people in the world to ask our thoughts on <laughs> video games. And thirty four people or thirty seven or whatever it is right now in the thirties care enough about what we have to say about video games that they want to pay to support it. Mm-hmm. And like it, it's such a special thing to me. Like yeah. the rest of the channel, yeah, I make more money doing other things. Yeah. The podcast is a very time consuming thing now that I'm even editing it. It's very time consuming. My computer crashes all the time. My, you know, what it, it, it's just a really rough thing I do, but it is so amazing to me the the outpouring of support that this thing gets. And um, it's because people want to hear what we have to say. Uh, there's legit people that get mad at me that I don't let Eric talk more. And it's not, not because, you know, those moments when Eric just doesn't have anything to say. Yeah. But it's also like when he does have something to say and then I cut him off. It's like, he hardly ever has anything to say. So why do you cut him <laughs> off the one time he does? Yeah, right. But people actually care yeah. what Eric has to say. And then I always look Which at the dynamic. Like, I'm someone who knows the ins and outs and all the news and everything happening with Nintendo all the time. I've played a ton of Switch games this year. He played Pokemon. Only new Switch game outside of E3 yeah. that he's played that he owns. I played a yeah. Okay, there that, that caveat that, yeah. that took it out of the it. Caveat. I'm like I played a like uh, like as an hour of Smash. Yeah, I think you played a couple matches of Fortnite during a live stream when I had to no. go to the bathroom. No, I, I swore I handed you the control. You yeah, were, I you think were, I sat there and did nothing. Sat there and did nothing because <laughs> um, you were you were in the uh, you were in the one house just crouched in the corner. I think. Oh it, yeah, it was like the perfect spot. I yeah, like, I was, I I was, hide, I was like, hiding out trying to just survive yeah. till the end. Yeah, um, I think he won that game. <laughs> probably did. I've only yeah. ever won two matches, so. Uh, but yeah, it's. I, I've had a lot of um, a lot a lot of fun on this podcast, and and I think people care about your perspective, uh, because. Let's just say you're someone who cares about gaming, but you are on the most casual of casual sides of it. Um, you play a lot more. Put it this way: you put more hours in Task Force Baseball than you probably put into any game. On oh, your that's Switch. probably true. And that's not it. Probably that South Park game too. Yeah, that's, uh, that's and like, true. like, like, like oh. when I say casual, like it's not like I'm not saying people who play phone games are casual, but like. Well. 
for him, the convenience, the ease of it, the pick up and play, be done in a couple oh, the, minutes. The fact that I can play it at work, dude. yeah, I, well, it's kind of hard. It's a lot easier it's to sit. Hard, it's it's a lot, lot easier to sit on a phone just going like this. Yeah, yeah. Then, then it is then like, to bring up you my switch. Up switch. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying I haven't, but <laughs> oh hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> then I'm, not that anybody at my work cares. Yeah, no, but as long as I'm getting my work done. Oh yeah, no, and I do. But I get my work. But the point, I think the point is like you are on the casual side of things where you're not hardcore into this stuff like you once were. Yeah. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people respect your thoughts on things because you come from the perspective of, okay, I, I, I have a, a big gaming history. Um, I know, you know a lot, heck, you know a lot more about classic games than even I do. Uh, cause you were, especially if it comes to like NES or anything like that, like you are, mm -hmm. you're all on top of that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, I think it's just interesting seeing like, okay, here's a former hardcore gamer that has now become, I hate that term, but whatever. Yeah. For lack of a better term. Yes. Uh, and then he, uh, you know, now he's on the super casual. He's basically what I should be as a parent of three, hardly touching games ever. <laughs> <laughs> what I should be doing, but because it's my profession, I'm it almost should I'm be a, roles reversed because I, because it is my profession. I'm allowed, like, that's the one thing too. Like I love gaming so much. I made it my profession. So I keep playing games. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. That's not why I did it, but like, it's kind of interesting that because of what I do, I'm able to play more games than I would be otherwise. Um, it, like bare minimum, you know, it was really interesting. Cause like there were weeks where I didn't play any game, uh, until I live streamed. But because live streaming is work, I get to play games. And like, how amazing is that to be like, hey, oh geez, yeah, I'm working right now. What are you doing? I'm live streaming a video game. Yeah, right. <laughs> like it's like, yeah, that's what I'm doing for work right now. Yeah, like, right. that's my job right now for like the next two to three hours is to play a video game. <laughs> like, yeah. it, it's such a cool thing. And um, I think I think like it, just getting those different perspectives. Like, I'm in tune with everything going on with Nintendo. I have more. Ex I don't play literally everything, but I play a lot of games on Switch. Uh, and then there's you that like you enjoy switch you really enjoy certain games on switch but you play them casually you're not going to be done with breath of the wild probably for a decade um you know <laughs> I, I mean like that's which, just reality which, which fair enough might be the next time the zelda game comes out <laughs> oh please no yeah right no don't do that to I'm me just kidding. No more. i'm kidding uh so i don't know it's, it's just two different perspectives and then you guys obviously i know everyone loves when we get other voices in that have yeah. completely different opinions. oh for sure because there's a lot of times that like because i'm more knowledgeable eric will just be like yeah okay because, like, he's learning as I'm saying things. Like, he didn't know that happened. He didn't know yeah. this happened. Like, he probably doesn't know that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate sold $5 million in three days. No, I knew it was selling really, really, really well. Yeah. But $5 million in three days That's worldwide. crazy. That is nuts. Yeah. Like, there are some fans now that think it might hit $25 million at some point. Yeah. I mean, Possible. It uh, so, I don't know. And, and I look back at this podcast over the past year, and I love it, man. Um, I don't love editing it. I'll say that. I'm not a fan of editing the podcast. Thank you, Martin, for yeah, like, right. the entire year <laughs> of work you did for free editing the podcast. Like, I cannot thank you enough for that. Um, having having, I used to edit it. Now, going back to it, I'm like, man, this is a lot of hard work. Uh, and my computer, it takes my computer out for an entire day. Cause, well, one, I don't have the most ideal computer for rendering anyways, mm -hmm. uh, and it crashes. So sometimes that sucks. It'll render for three hours and then crash, and I have to start the render over again. That's a pain Yay. in the butt. That's that's on my. I got to get a new computer built. Uh, that's goal of 2019 is not only going back to E3 but getting a new computer built. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do both. We're going to explode. That's why, right? We're going to hit 100k in 2019. Yeah, buddy. Forget the 50k goal. We're going straight to yeah. straight to 100. Yeah, straight to 100k. Um, but yeah, and I think like even just looking back on on the like the channel. Because I'm, I'm probably going to do a, a conversation video just looking back at the channel um, at some point. Maybe a Prime Answers episode will be all about reminiscing. Uh, but it's just been a, a, a crazy, uh, you know, a crazy 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our most viewed video ever come out like a month ago mm -hmm. uh, in the Switch hacking video that I have just as much hate for as love for. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, you know, that hit 300,000 views. We've never had that happen in the history of Nintendo Prime. Uh, we've had our most popular podcast episode come out. We had one hit like 6,000 this, this year. I don't remember which episode it was. Should have been the Smashcast. Yeah, right. I think that would have been the best representation of, the, of our podcast. Right. But, um, we, had, we had an episode hit 6,000. Crazy. We, we had an episode get over like 900 listens just on Podbean and iTunes and stuff. Awesome. We never had that happen before either. Um, we've had, uh, I, I guess, a more uh, standardizing of the content coming out. It's, it's been coming out, especially the last couple months, been coming out more frequently, uh, more often. Prime News uh, still 
isn't exactly on the schedule I want it to be, but it's a new show that that really you know fired up this year and and, and has become a thing. Um, and just because people keep comparing it to Spawn 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 Wave News or whatever doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing it, guys. I don't really care this, that he does something for all of gaming. Let him have his show. Who cares? Um, and like as an example, like you know, uh, by the time this podcast comes out and it's fully edited, like I'm going to be on Spawn Wave's podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, you know, it, it's not like an achievement, but it's kind of cool that like, oh, that happened this year. Mm-hmm. This year, I, I got to be on a super popular video game podcast with a bunch of other really popular YouTubers. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of cool uh, that I get to do that and. Um, that's like a I, not an achievement, but it's it's just an interesting thing that happened this year for me. Um, I got my first ever sponsored video this year. It hasn't come out yet on Carnival Games with my family, but that happened this year. We were like first ever like where a, a video game company reached out to me and said, "Hey, not only do we want to send you the game, we want to send you a bunch of stuff, <laughs> um, <laughs> Carnival stuff and confetti that was a, oh, a big mess." But uh, anyways, they yeah. want to send me a bunch of stuff and we want to sponsor you to do a video where all you're doing is like they literally call it. We want to sponsor a family game night. There you go. And I just yeah. have to like put highlights of it in a video. Like sweet. And they're paying me to do that. Like that's I've never had a video game company approach me and be like, "Hey, we want to sponsor a video." And yeah, some people are, might be like, "Oh, you should never accept money like that." And I'm like, I, I got I got mouths to feed, man. And if they're going to pay me to play a game with my kids, yeah. I'm just not going to review a game when that happens. Like I'm not going to review Carnival games, obviously. Yeah. Doesn't feel doesn't feel right to me for no, a game no, that no. I was not that it was not that it was sent for me for free, but that they're paying me. Like I'm right. not. Um, no, it doesn't feel right. So I'll probably right. never do an impressions of that of that game. Right, Just do, sure. do my prime family video on it, and that's it. Unless I really 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 enjoy it, maybe it'll come up on another live stream or something sometime if I yeah. if I like it enough. But uh, it's just uh. You know that that happened. What else? Uh, we went to E3 this year. Yeah. Uh, that was big. Yes. First time ever is Nintendo Prime. Yeah. Our second time ever going. Yes. First time was back at in 2016 for Zelda Informer. Yes. Now, what was cool, we got to go as media then. Right. Uh, we didn't get to go as media this time with the Game Pass, but that was completely fan-funded. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was an Thank amazing you. experience. Uh, I, I definitely was a lot smoother than the 2016 venture. We'll be even smoother if we have a, if we have a media pass. And we yes. discovered, because now everyone's doing their own thing, uh, like, we have to get there even sooner than we did. Yeah. Uh, so now, yeah. I, instead of being a week, like the first time we literally went three days and we're out, mm-hmm. um, penny pension as much as it could, paid out of pocket. Yeah. Uh, the second time, uh, you know, you guys fan funded and we were there for a week. And it's like, now we got to be there like a week, <laughs> a week and a half if we really want to mm-hmm. cover everything right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what? It's cool. We actually got, well, like, like we got, we're in a hotel that had good enough Wi Fi to stream from. That was right. Insane. Yeah, yeah, right. Did not expect that. I mean, you yeah. never right. have good internet. And we were wired, but even yeah. still, you never have good internet in a hotel. Right. This hotel, not only was the hotel room really, really nice, yeah. in a nice location, yeah. and it really wasn't right. even that pricey. Right. And it had good internet. Like, mm-hmm. and then right. it charged for parking. Right. Like a yeah, lot of other right. hotels yeah, in LA. Yeah, yeah for sure. So that was cool. Yeah, because it wasn't, and it, it would have been nice LA. to have an extra, like a full day where we could have relaxed. Yeah, and like went to a beach. I, I think I instead think, of rushing it, it rushes every time in the final. I day. think from a Saturday to a Sunday might be good enough. Because we went from what we Monday went, we, through. We, we went Sunday through Friday. Sunday through Friday. I think a Saturday through Sunday might be. Yeah, but even that EA play started on Saturday. We almost had to be there on Friday. And fly in Friday night. <laughs> I don't want to fly on Friday night and be exhausted yeah. all day Saturday. Thursday. I'd rather fly in on like Thursday and then ha- have Friday to kind of map out. Yeah. Like look look at all the events and, and the schedule, map out our plan, yeah. and then take that day and just kind of like, you know, do whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't know what. Maybe it'll just be a day of doing nothing because yeah. we have so much, like, so much to do. But, yeah. um, <laughs> pig out on fat tomato pizza. Out on fat tomato pizza and oh, watch a God. burger game or something. Yeah, right. Be but, um, It'd be so we got to do that this year. That was really cool. What else did we I'm trying to think of, of any other accomplishments? This year. I mean, we we hit forty thousand subscribers this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, we hit we had ten thousand new gains last year. I mean, We're actually at like forty two, almost forty three thousand right now, which is yeah. three thousand ahead of last year's pace, which is like. Awesome. Like, we were actually showing growth year over year. That's really interesting. We actually met a couple of YouTubers, different YouTubers at, yep. at E3. Uh, that was cool. I didn't get to meet Bob Wolf. I did. I did. That was kind of cool. Bob, if you're watching. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Oh, sorry. How can we forget the biggest highlight of the year? What? Meeting Neil. Ah, Neil Willis. Meeting Neil. That Neil was awesome. Was yeah. Dude. Great guy. We actually, for the first, he was the first ever fan we've ever met. Yeah. Never met any of you guys. Except Neil yeah. Wills. Unless you're Neil Wills, we bet you. Yeah. Hung out for 
Like half a day. Yeah. It was, well, it was about half a day, I guess. Yeah. Um, it was the day that uh, we were picking up our registration for E3. It was like mm-hmm. the day we got there, basically. Yeah. Or the following day, whatever it yeah. was. And uh, picked up our E3 registration, and then he, he got us some lunch. Thank you, Neil. Yes. Uh, and then we just hung out and talked and, and kind of walked around the, the area and got some B-roll and did a little vlog footage stuff and got him in the vlog. Um, you know, t- found out that uh, he's a Packer fan, which helps. Yeah, there you go. Helps a lot. Yeah, when right. We're from Wisconsin and right. he's in California and he's right. a Packer fan. Um, and uh, that he really likes basketball and I really like basketball and he's w- in way better shape than I've probably been in my entire life. <laughs> Even when I was <laughs> a four that? sport athlete. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think I was a five sport athlete for one year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it was really, really cool, and that happened during E3 as well, so yeah. that, that was a really cool thing to happen. And, oh. like, who knows? Maybe one of these years we'll have a real fan meetup. Yeah. Here's the big thing with fan meetups is we're in Wisconsin. Yeah. So, for me, like, a fan meetup would be like, okay, let's all meet up in Eau Claire, or and Manitown. nobody shows up at me in there. Yeah. But, like, oh, I rent out a little place, yeah. and I set up some switches and TVs, and then right. no one shows up. Right. Because we're in Wisconsin. Right. No one's coming to Wisconsin no. for a fan meetup. No. It's just not going to happen. No. Like, we're not in California. We're not right. in New York. We're not right. in places where we might have a big enough, like, at least a couple dozen or so fans that might right. actually show up. Right. Like, no one's coming to Wisconsin. To, uh, maybe 5J. 5J yeah. will come as a sympathy. Oh. We can get, <laughs> uh, oh, God. Oh, um, uh, why can't? It, why am I spacing on his name? Zion. Zion. <laughs> sympathy. Oh, wait. Sympathy. He oh, wait. just happens to be in town for a performance. Yeah, hey, right. that's the night that we scheduled this meetup. Yeah. You should come on oh, by. It also helps that he lives not then, too far oh, from then, us. Then Zion and 5J yeah. shows up and no one else is like, oh, let's record a podcast. Yeah, right? Hey, there we go. <laughs> let's make use of this. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there's uh, – well, we're not big enough yet for a meetup, I don't think. But it, it was really cool to meet a fan. Yeah. Um, I'm still waiting for that day that uh, – because people – People recognize me from Zelda Informer even in this area because Zelda Informer was just a big deal. I don't think if you guys understand, like millions and millions of viewers, uh, like 100 million plus sometimes per year, uh, it was a really big place that I was running. And uh, a lot of people in this area started recognizing me as you're that guy from Zelda Informer. I was the face of the website, the face mm-hmm. of the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm waiting for that day that, that people start being like, oh, yeah, you're, you're Nintendo Prime. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm walking around in Nintendo Prime shirt or whatever, and they'd be like, oh, like yeah. I'm waiting for yeah, right. it. I'm waiting yeah. for the day that someone – recognizes me yeah that's when i know i made it yeah right i probably have to have a million plus youtube channel before that happens because it took you know 100 million people going to zelda informer for it to happen but yeah uh still uh people do see me sometimes in the nintendo gear and they're always like oh man you, you're a nintendo fan i'm like yeah i it's my job <laughs> and he's like your job is to be a fan i'm like no but yes <laughs> well, my fandom has led to a job yes uh so it, it's uh it, it's been a really really interesting year um it's obviously been the, the highest revenue year we've ever had for anyone who cares about that kind of stuff because uh, we were barely making money last year. I don't think we started making money until like the very end of the year. Um, we just didn't have enough viewership to even qualify for ads. Uh, so we started making money towards the end of last year uh, as, a, as a channel and then obviously blew up this year. That uh, we're What's really cool is this channel is still primarily fan-supported. So we have our Patreon, but then also all the Super Chats and donations we get during live streams. Mm-hmm. Huge deal. Without that stuff, I wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, so it's really awesome that we are have so much support from the community to keep this going. Um, you know, I, oh, another cool thing, I, I did a fan on, like, like let's just say this is the year the fans sent me stuff. They sent me games. You um, got a P.O. Th- box. <laughs> these microphones were bought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a PO box now. Yeah, uh, we're recording this using a you know a, a capture card sent in by a fan. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think here. What anything wrong with like this collector's edition of Octopath Traveler that was bought for me by Be Righteous? Um, it, it's been really it's been a really interesting year. Like this is the first year we really have like fans sending in stuff and wanting to buy stuff and not really taking no for an answer from me because. <laughs> I like, I'm always like, don't buy me anything, and then people just keep doing it. So uh, whatever, you know, I appreciate any of it. And I always say, if I ever get like a duplicate of a game that I that I have, um, I'll probably do like what Beat 'Em Ups does, uh, where it's like, hey, look, if I get a duplicate, I'll probably just like give it away. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, I, I don't really care if I have a sealed copy versus a non-sealed copy. Uh, so, but you know, that's obviously something I, I try to okay with the person that sent it, as long as they actually give me contact info. Because some pa- sometimes people send packages or letters, and like, there's no like who's it from yeah that's like uh no one cool all righty then we're just gonna give this bad boy away yeah 
Uh, so that was kind of cool, and I got to make an, a, a video about that uh, that led to the big confetti mess we had. <laughs> um, You're welcome, by the way. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. He'll, yeah. he'll pick it all up. Uh, so, yeah, it's been... Oh, I see I see some more confetti. Yeah. I, was a bit dope. I know, right? Um, yeah. Anyways, it, it's been a crazy year this year. Um, a big year for us. This was like a proving ground year. Yeah. This is the first year I did Nintendo Prime full-time the entire year. Uh, and... I'm still standing. We're at the end of the year. Uh, we're in the midst of one of our highest revenue months of the year right now. Um, we are in the midst of one of our, well, this is actually the highest viewership month we've ever had in the history of the channel. Granted, a lot of that's from the viral video, but even some of our normal videos are getting more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just re- released an editorial style video like four days ago, and it's got 10,000 views. Like that was like unheard of before. Well, so I mean, even the, even the fact, even our podcasts, they're starting to get, you know, almost, almost to a thousand per, which is good. Yeah. It used to be like two to 300. Yeah. Right. Uh, and actually, um, one thing I can say about this podcast for 2019 is, is I'm going back to something we used to do before as a testing ground. Um, we're still going to have like everything we normally do, which is like the full podcast. It's going to release on Mondays and blah, 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 and all that stuff. Uh, but anytime we have like any discussion topics that aren't necessarily just news, mm-hmm. um, let's say, uh, you know, as an example, um, you know, th- this week we're going to talk about, uh, you know, one topic dedicated to hype and expectations for Animal Crossing. A great discussion yeah. topic we can have at any point before Animal Crossing comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to start segmenting some of that out and releasing them as their own videos. Uh, not so much that I'm – like before, I remember, we used to segment the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm not like – like we're still going to do everything we normally do, but then later in the week have little segments of the podcast. The goal of that is shorter clips get more eyeballs usually on, mm-hmm. on YouTube. And the goal of that is, okay, this is a small segment. Hope you enjoyed it. Here's the full thing. Right. And then just drive more people to the Patreon and more people to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, you know, it gets extra views on stuff we said and what content we did. Uh, I, I'm not going to say it's going to be like, you know, five days a week, you know, splitting up every topic because I don't think every topic needs to be on its own. Right. Uh, but when we, especially when it's news, right. uh, news topics, um, if they're not still relevant at the time or uh, there's been more updates to it or whatever, like it's yeah. not worth it. Right. No. Like if we sure. talk about Smash sales now, we might have new, new numbers next week. So oh, it's not for sure. It's really worth separating out yeah. a Smash segment like yeah. that. But. Uh, any impressions that we give, mm-hmm. stuff like that, like even like like I think it'd be good to do that next year. I want to start that in 2019. So uh, not this podcast, not the next one, but the one after our first one that actually releases in. Uh, I think it's actually no, no, it will be recorded in 2019. Yes, it will. So our first one that actually releases uh, in 2019, recorded in 2019. If there's a a, a segment that works in that, mm-hmm. uh, we'll release a smaller segment. Yeah, and it also it's also great when when fans submit topics too that they want. Sure. I mean, yeah, we, and we've always taken fan topics, but we always do a terrible job of advertising we take fan topics. Yes. You can email them in to Nathan at NintendoPrime.net. Uh, if you're a member of our Patreon, uh, you can literally just post it on Patreon, or you could message on Discord because you do get Discord access and an ability to message me if uh, if you're a member of our Patreon. Uh, you can always leave it down in the comments on the video. I, would, I, I, would read almost all, I read all the comments on the podcast videos. Yeah, I generally sure. try to do it too. But, so, um, so if I would any, suggest pinging you just in case but what in the comments oh you don't have to ping me in the comments i, I i'm actually notorious about reading comments i probably yeah. read more comments than i should <laughs> but the podcast episodes i always read every comment mm-hmm. so um that's a good way to get them into um, i'm never gonna probably put up like a post or anything that's say, asking for fan topics yeah um i know i did like one time this year but uh i i honestly think that um, I want it to be more organic. I want it to be because people want us to create a whole topic out of something. Right. And it's different than Prime Answers. Prime Answers is a QA. and a This could be as simple as, hey, I really want you to talk about this. Mm-hmm. So then exactly, yeah. I tell Eric about it, tell him to actually do research on it, and usually he actually does the research and yeah. he comes and he has something good to say or something yeah. negative to say or whatever he yeah. wants to say. Maybe it's something that's neutral. Maybe it's, uh, dude, did you see this? And I'm like, no, what are you talking about? Then yeah. he plays it for me and then I have to put the clip in the video. Yeah. Extra editing. Yeah. Um, that's okay. Uh, I mean, we also did things like we changed up the format of the podcast ending this year. Green screen to this. Yeah. Uh, and then next year, at some point, a completely rebuilt podcast set. At some point. It's going to be a slow process because I'm going to get a lot of the stuff from Ikea. But the big thing is there's going to be monitors in the back now, like at least two of them. I'm debating if I want to use the BenQ for one of them or not. Because mm-hmm. the bottom line, I'm going to have to run it off my laptop. Mm-hmm. I can still record everything to this, but I'll yeah, have to yeah. run that off my laptop. So th- there's some logistics with it, but uh, I honestly think it'll be really, really sweet. And I can use it for other things too. Yeah. Um, like I've been using this for everything, unboxings, everything. Like it'd be cool to have like the different sets. So um, 
anyways, that that's something as well that we're we're looking into for next year. I don't have any concrete plans in because first oh. I got to get a budget. But how, how could we forget the office expansion? Oh yeah. That's one of where the we are right now. This is the biggest thing you could yeah. argue that's happened. Yeah, right. Uh, we went from. <laughs> I don't, it's been it's been a little bit now that I forget because um, I don't even go in that room hardly ever yeah. anymore. Uh, so the this year, like we expanded um, this everything we used to do at Nintendo Prime for a majority of this year was done in a little eight by six foot room. Yeah, somewhere in that maybe, area. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Somewhere in that area. Might be smaller because of the closet takes out a chunk of it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a really awkward shaped room. But because um, instead of the closet being into it, this wall out here is flat. So yeah. the closet pushes into the other room. Anyways, the point is. It really should go out into the laundry room. But that's the way. Well, uh, yeah, but then it runs. everything should be designed yes, a little yes. different down right, here. Right, but right. Uh, yeah, so I did everything in there. So all the green screen work, anything you saw with me on camera, anything off camera, all the editing, and it was always boiling in that room because it was yeah. a tiny room. Even with the window open all yeah. the time, didn't matter. Even in the middle yeah. of winter, it was still always boiling in that room. Um, that room was directly below my bedroom, so there was a lot of, like, you know, keeping my fiance awake and her being mad about that. Uh, and just just a lot, of, um, a lot of things that were hard to do. And then uh, after talking to my fiance and... Uh, the landlords, uh, well, you know, her that, parents and stuff. I we we realized that okay, we were gonna build a whole wall or put yeah, in a yeah. Originally, we wall. were gonna like put up a temporary wall that went like I don't know, not halfway down the room, but you know, like a third yeah. of the way down the room, and expand the office out this way, and then have a set out here, and then a set in there, and then be done with it basically. But uh, after talking to, we realized that, one, my kids don't play in the playroom as often as we thought they would. Yeah. So why do they need such a big player? And we, and we didn't actually use the man cave as much as we thought we would either. Because the man cave wasn't connected to the office. See, right. if the man cave was connected to the office, like right. I watch stuff on this TV all the time. Yeah. If it was connected to my office, it yeah, would right? have had a lot more exactly. use out of yeah, it. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. But the problem was th- there's a man cave, which the only reason I was allowed to have it is because I had a bar built into it already. Yeah. So right. basically I had my, my office, and then there was a giant playroom from my office that you have to walk through to get to the man cave. So the man cave really wasn't used as often as I wanted to, and mm-hmm. the office was, was so dinky and crampy and I mean, even now my office is a is, is a mess right now, of uh, my little studio space. But uh, imagine the same kind of mess, but in an eight by six foot thing. It was yeah. like, yeah, right? you were yeah. you were diving to get around yeah. things. Um, getting yeah. getting behind this table was even a chore. Yeah. You had to crawl under and yeah. Uh, like we, one of the biggest things we did is we expanded the studio. You guys helped support some of that. A little bit of money. We got some paint. We got some other things. Uh, you know, now we got the blue wall. Now we have, uh, you know, the whenever you see, uh, I'm trying to do practical effects now for things and less green screen work. So, like, whenever you see, like, the different lights in the back of Prime News, that's from a flood, a flood lamp uh, on a white wall. Um, the footage you see for Pokemon Let's Go Peach, Let's Go Eevee, when I'm using the Pokeball Plus, will be over here. Yeah. For one of the first times, I'll actually use the TV portion of the set, uh, which... It doesn't get used as much because it became like it's became basically the man cave corner of the yeah. Uh, it, it's all sports stuff, yeah. but um, even then, like it makes a lot of sense for me to do it there because it's a big TV, so you get that action. Plus, there's a lot of room to actually do the motion controls. It makes a lot more sense than me just sitting in front of my computer doing it uh, for recording purposes. And I would like to use that space a little more for videos like that. Um, I've even thought about doing things like uh, like uh, I don't know what do you call it. Um, like a, kind of like a fireside chat, but we don't have a fireplace in here. Yeah. But like where Eric and I, or like me, maybe me and my fiance, or like me and one other person, uh, we kind of like sit down on the couch and do like an interview style discussion. Yeah. I think that's a perfect space for it. I could yeah. throw the flood lamp on in the background, make everything like different colors, and it would be really cool looking. <laughs> you can use your portable green screen. <laughs> <Wait>. uh, <laughs> the thing is, I can yeah. actually use it. Yeah. I totally forgot about cropping. Yeah. And now. Yeah. Uh, and now I was, I was experimenting with this the other day with the new camera setup because I have to shine a light at me or there's not enough light for the camera. It actually shines just enough light for the green screen too. So, like, I could have been using the green screen the whole time. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Yeah, there you go. What can you say? I mean, I'm an idiot. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, yeah, that, I mean, th- this expansion, this was a lot of work. Yeah. We had to install a door. Never done that before. Yeah, either way. That was fun. Still not really done done, uh, mostly because what Yulia wants me to do, because like we had to build like a little two, two and a half foot section of wall yeah. uh, to put the door in, and <laughs> um, it wasn't that I didn't know how to do that. It's that like I just want to sheetrock it up and be done. She doesn't want me to sheetrock it up. She wants me to put a window in. <sighs> it means I need custom cut glass. 
That's not cheap. So it'll probably never happen. <laughs> yeah. It's just probably gonna I I have a feeling it might stay this way for a long time. Yeah, I have a feeling <laughs> just it's a gonna feeling. stay that way a long just time. Just a feeling. Too. I don't yeah. think it's gonna change that, no. that much. Um but yeah, you know the thing is I don't think I've ever done like an actual studio tour video either. Like no. I actually showed people the studio, the oh, whole no. the whole thing. Like when you see me on live streams, you get to see it all, but you don't really get to see like the intricacies of it, like why things are certain ways. Um, you know, you never see the whiteboard anymore. Like, you know, what is the whiteboard? What am I using it for? Right now, a lot of it is um, reminding me of my goals for Prime News or anything else uh, and then putting up appointments. Uh, I still have the stream donation record up there. I can't believe we got that in one night. Yeah. I'm looking at that record. We've made $795 in one night. That's crazy. I. It wasn't like a charity stream. Like, for a charity stream, sure. Yeah. But, like, people just wanted to chuck money my way. I think I got really plastered that night, too. Yeah, I think so. Holy crud. Um, like, I don't know, like there, there's a lot of intricacies. Uh, and maybe, maybe that's one thing I'll do heading into 2019 is actually give a studio tour and then maybe talk about things I want to do. Like in the, you know, in, in the other room, cause the now we have, we have two rooms, the, 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 the green screen room that's going to be redesigned into a set. Um, you know, talk about what I want to do in there and, uh, what I think it's going to cost based on the research I've done on the stuff I want to use for it and stuff like that. Because there's also like specific monitors you need to get that actually work with a camera. Uh, Cause some monitors you get do the, the line the thing. Lines, yeah. um, and some of them screw around with like, it only works if you're focused on it. Mm. Cause you, cause you got that cause, of the, cause it's emitting light. Right. So the camera, it'll just look black until you focus on it. Then it's bright and everything else is black. Mm -hmm. So like you have to get a certain type of monitor that, that is going to work better with a professional grade camera. And I mean, that's fine. They, they even have some of those that aren't like super, super expensive. So the ones I have might not even work because you know, my first thought is just use the ones I have and mount them on the wall, but that might not work. And then also mount them on the wall. You got to hide the cables. Uh, so you got to get like cable runners that you paint over and, Anyways, uh, it's not that it can't be done, but like there's just a lot of stuff. Like this table, um, it'll probably always be in use, but probably in here. I feel like it's really good in this space. Um, and in there, I, I want something that's maybe a little longer. Um, that has, well, probably ha that, that, that we have a fold downside in the walkthrough um, and fold back up. But uh, just, so, I don't know, maybe it'll be a completely different kind of table. Maybe it'll be something that's got like a rounded front. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Um, there, there's a lot of things I'm considering for that space that I want to do. Um, and it's amazing that I have a whole room that I can literally just make it into a set. Like, that's crazy that I can even think about doing that. Like, this mm -hmm. whole th this space has to be my editing station, has to be multiple different sets. I can have a whole room that's just one set. And that's really, mm -hmm. really cool. So, I'll, because of that, I want to do something really cool with that set. Because the whole room would be, it's going to be dedicated to it. But um, I'm not sure what yet. Yeah. The only thing I'm probably lacking in all of this is storage space. I have the one closet, and that closet was full before we even did anything. Yeah, right. I have like nowhere to store anything. Like yeah. a lot of this stuff around here is is besides some you know some garbage or whatever is I just have nowhere to put it. Um, and that's another thing I need to solve at some point too. I don't know if I'm gonna build some shelving units. Um, I don't know. I mean, I probably should have replaced that table that you know that leans in in the middle with with something more sturdy. Yeah. Um, eventually, um, yeah, I probably should just build some, st some storage somewhere. Like maybe because like this is never shown. Maybe I have a shelving unit off here that's got mm -hmm. bins. Yeah. Cause I need more bins to store like all my different cords and my cables in all my damn switch cases. Hey, I love reviewing switch cases. Stop sending me them unless it's something unique. <laughs> Seriously. Everyone and their mother wants me to like review their switch case. I'm like, I'm only going to review it if it's something different than I've done before. And, like, most switch cases now I've done – I felt like I've ran the gambit. I think the only thing I haven't reviewed yet is something like a Waterfield case, um, which is more about style than anything else. Hmm. But, hey, hey, Waterfield, you want to send me one of your $80 plus city slicker cases or something? <laughs> go for it. You're not going to, but go for it. Um, anyways, I think that's it. I don't, I, there's just been a lot that's happened this year. Yeah. And it's all exciting, and I'm really excited about what we're going to do next year. Uh, right now, one of the big things is just getting media passes for E3. Yeah. Whether or not we can afford to go, hey, it'd be cool to at least qualify as media. Yeah, right. We won't qualify as a YouTube channel, by the way, so. Yeah, no. Um, I'll hold, you know what? Mm. Tis the season. We're getting 50,000 50, new subs next week, and all of our videos are going to skyrocket to 50K plus every time. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. This podcast is the leading candidate it to is. make that done. It is. Get that done. Let's make this the highest viewed podcast of the year right now. Right. Share it with all your friends that nobody's going to care about because no one's going to care about what we're talking about. Right. But anyways, that's going to do it. Uh, be sure to check out our 
Uh, Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. I already talked about the tiers for that before. Uh, you can check out the podcast as well on Podbean, on iTunes, on Google Play Store. All you have to do is type in Nintendo Prime Podcast. It'll be the only one that pops up. Um, I'm trying to think if there is anything else. I mean, follow me on Twitter at Ninty Prime. Follow you at Emo8790. I think. Is there anything else we got to mention? NintendoPrime.net. Oh, yeah. Hey, NintendoPrime.net. That's actually how we're going to try to get in as media. Yes. NintendoPrime.net. Because the requirements for viewership on websites is much lower. Yes. Uh, but anyways, we post so our head podcast. Over that way. We post our podcast at NintendoPrime.net, too. We have a forum that I would love to be more active, but yeah. no one's active in. Uh, so, anyways, lots of stuff. Oh, and uh, there's going to be changes to Patreon. Um, for those that, are, that support us on Patreon currently, for the podcast, don't worry. We're still going to podcast stuff. Uh, the big thing is our Patreon's been kind of built around the podcast. We're so much more than just a podcast now, though. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I want to expand our Patreon tiers, add new tiers, add different new tiers um, for different things uh, that people might be more interested in. And I know, Edward, I know you want a Patreon game night. I hear you. You want it to be on weekends, you bastard. I hear you. <laughs> I'm trying not to work on weekends. This podcast now gets edited on weekends, so now I have to work weekends. You bastard. I have to do the, the Spawncast podcast tomorrow night. Bastards. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm actually excited about that. Yeah. But or, or, or Saturday night. But it, it's... I can tell you right now, Edward, there's nothing being added for weekends. <laughs> but uh, there'll, there'll be some changes that, I, that I'm going to go through and um, articulate first to the current patrons. And then I'll probably make like an announcement video about uh, about updates to Patreon for 2019 for the public, for anyone who might be interested in supporting us and supporting uh, new shows that I want to do. Uh, you know, I want to I want to put a big emphasis on getting reviews done. Uh, I want to put a big, big emphasis on our top ten list on uh, discussion videos like the one that I did a few days back. Um, I just want to put a big emphasis on some of some of the more original content besides just the news and the podcast, like more shows. So. Uh, Look forward to that in 2019. And hopefully I get support for that because uh, it's always risky. It's risky just diving into a whole bunch of new content. But uh, with your guys' support, it minimizes the risk for me um, and obviously shows that we have people interested in that stuff. So thanks for your support in 2018. Mm-hmm. Seriously, it's been yeah, it's right. been amazing. Um, from everything from going to E3 to supporting the podcast to um, making the live streams, I, I guess, hella entertaining. Although... Was it the stream that was entertaining, or was it my fiance ripping on me during streams that was entertaining? You, or, I know you guys or prefer. Or was it the streams. chair? Was it the chair streams? Could be. Could be. <laughs> or right, me folks. ripping on you in streams too. Uh, we have fun. one more podcast, but this is the last one for Eric. Anything you want to say to, yeah. to round up twenty eighteen? I mean, thank you guys for all your support. I mean, I don't necessarily see a lot of it, which is fine, but you're supporting this guy, and that that's that's awesome. Yeah. And don't worry, for those out there that be like, what do you mean you really support Eric? Eric will, put it this way, if we get to a point that I can afford another employee, Eric will be the first. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to actually do any more work than he already does, but he'll get compensated for what he already <laughs> does a little more. I mean, It I, doesn't bother me. No, I know it doesn't bother you. It's just us, us hanging out. You don't have to do any editing or any yeah. of the heavy lifting. You just yeah. sit down for a couple hours and talk about games. Yeah, right, pretty much. Um, but uh, still, it, it is one of those things that... Uh, that that is kind of a goal in 2019 is that I can at least get to a point where Eric can get a little change every month. But we'll see. That requires the channel continues to grow and you guys continue to support. Uh, and then after that, I think a 2020 goal will be that I want to hire a part-time editor. Yeah. But that's that will be for 2020. Um, I don't know how that's going to work because I record in high quality and throwing files over the internet is easy for me but not always easy for the editors, but... Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe I'll actually find someone locally. Maybe I should try hiring locally first. Yeah, might be interesting. Put out a little ad. Yeah, Craigslist or something. Be like, yeah. hey, looking for like a part-time video editor. Yeah, you know, edit like two videos a week or something, podcasts or something. I don't yeah. Know. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, hey, I'll, I'll catch you one more time this year, podcast-wise. Uh, you'll see this guy what January eighth, something like that. I think the first is on a Monday, so or it's Tuesday. Yeah, first right. on Tuesday. So happy holidays. Later.